Hello everybody! And oh my goodness, I forgot to put my light on. I'm just realizing. <laughs> Hello everybody! And welcome to Without a Voice, which is kind of me at the moment. Um, I woke up very late today and um, I've still got like that kind of just woke up kind of voice. <laughs> but that'll pass quickly enough. That'll, that'll pass soon. And then I will actually be able to speak properly. But uh, welcome everybody, welcome on in. It's uh, Women Wednesday again, um, a day short of International uh, Lesbian Day, but better late than never, right? <laughs> I, I actually genuinely didn't realize that yesterday was International Lesbian Day, otherwise I might have switched the streams and done this yesterday. But I don't know, having the Women Wednesday is fun. Women Wednesday is a lot of fun. But, uh, yes, uh, Draculary is here for the whole of October. <laughs> um, I, um, I didn't use the washout hair dye this time. I did a temporary one that's, um, going to last until October 31st. So I'm stuck like this. <laughs> but I'm fine with that. It's, it's seasonal, right? <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm, I'm so sleepy today. I've, I've, I've been having a, a bit of a time. <laughs> been having a bit of a time. My sleep has ended up getting really, really skewed. Like, now that I've got the new mattress, when I am sleeping, I am actually managing to get quality sleep, which is good, because I sure wasn't getting that before. But, um, it's actually getting the sleep in the first place is the problem at the moment. It sure is insomnia time. <laughs> but it's okay, I'll make it through. I'll make it through, I'll figure it out. I need to find more time to rest, to be honest, but I, I don't know what rest is. It's, it's fine. It's fine, it's not a problem. But, uh, Bob, congratulations on the first! Thank you for the luck. I hope you feel better soon, too. But I appreciate the luck. And the bot was like, how late? Two minutes late. Why is my bot so late? Why was that so delayed? <laughs> Hold on, let me, let me check something quickly. I just want to make sure my bot is actually working. Okay, yeah, the sounds are working and stuff. We're good. <laughs> we're good. We're okay. But uh, I'm really excited to play this because um, for anyone who doesn't know, my model art is done by the wonderful Addie Rosa. She did my logo. She did my model art. She did... A lot of the chibis you see around. She did my standees for my merch bundle. She does so much of my art. She's she's like the main artist for a lot of my stuff. It's her and Ghost Aficionado are my, my two main artists. But um, she's actually the artist in this game as well. She is part of the creation team for this game. And I played this back when it came out, before it was even on Steam like one of the very first versions of it. I might have even been like a beta tester. I don't actually remember. It was so long ago. <laughs> but I've been friends with her for so long. So it's it's so wild to think about. Like I was actually trying to think about it the other day and it was like, there's no way it's been this long. There is no way. Time is fake. <laughs> but no, it's, it's so amazing that we've been such good friends for so long. But uh, I have not played this since... Um, since it was first released and it's been updated a lot since then for a start it has voice acting <laughs> there wasn't any voice acting when i played it and there's also bonus content as well i know of but i don't actually know anything about the bonus content i'm saving that as a a nice surprise for when i play it but i've been so excited to revisit this i've been really looking forward to revisiting it because um, when it came out, I was like, okay, that's that's a game I've got sorted for October for for my, my horror month of streams. Because <laughs> this is quite a dark game. But uh, yes, this is another Yuri visual novel. I, I feel like that's pretty much all I'm playing at the moment. But uh, it is indeed. Anyway, oh, let me actually say hi to everyone before I start. I'm, I started I started with Bob and then I just forgot to continue. Um, I, I'm getting so distracted by my bot not working for so long. I don't know why I did that. But uh, Susan May, hello. Welcome, welcome. Uh, wannabe Weeb, lovely to see you here before the Discord bot. Yeah, all of my bots are being slow today. I have no idea why. <laughs> it's, 
it's okay. It's okay. If the bots want to be slow, they're allowed to be slow. They're doing an amazing job for me. <laughs> they're helping me out. So if they want to be slow, they can be as slow as they like. It's okay. Hey, Rahat, lovely to see you as well. Welcome, welcome. I'm so sorry for like the, the instant stream end after you raided me yesterday. <laughs> Uh, yesterday was, um, a very rough day. Like, I'd been feeling rough before I started streaming, but I still wanted to stream anyway because, like, I, I, I enjoy it. I really like streaming. I'm, I found something that I really enjoy and love to do, so I was like, well, I still want to stream. It'll cheer me up. And it kind of did cheer me up until I lost my progress. <laughs> so, like, it did work. Like, if I hadn't lost my progress, it would have gone perfectly and I would have been fine. But um, it was just a little moment of, um, I guess it's not so much a problem if you play the game with the timers on and you only have a limited amount of time each day. But because I'm playing with the, the unlimited timers, my day, which I lost the progress for, was really long. <laughs> so, like, thankfully, I was able to recreate the stickers I made. And we managed to get Oh No back and the, the very normal goose. But uh, yeah, it was it was mostly just a situation where I felt like I was about to burst into tears. So I was like, I should, I should probably stop. I should probably look after myself. And um, I proceeded to go downstairs, get myself a nice drink, and then Xander went, "Hey, I'm cooking a stir fry." So that I had delicious food, <laughs> and the food helped honestly. Like. There's something about, like, if you're feeling bad, just having a really delicious tasting meal genuinely helps. Genuinely helps so much. <laughs> and it was really nice. He made, like, a really nice uh, vegetable chicken stir fry. And it filled me up so nicely. And then for the rest of the evening, I was just like, I'm going to stay off the internet. I'm just going to get my laptop out. I'm going to turn my PC off. And I'm going to work on a little project I've been doing. And I actually managed to make really good progress in said project. Um, hold on, I could, I could give a little... I can give a little teaser. I can give a little teaser for the project I'm working on. Wait, I should say hi to everyone first. I got distracted yet again. Oh my goodness, I'm really good at this. But yeah, Zarok, hello! <laughs> Didn't actually say hi to you, but hello, welcome! Yeah, if you guess if you guess for any random Leary stream between it being House Flipper, Divinity, or a Yuri visual novel, you have a chance of hitting. Well, it's it's actually really easy to figure out. It's like comfy games, gay games, puzzle games, and um, whatever chaos is happening with Xander at the moment. That's that's pretty much all I stream. <laughs> that's pretty much all it is. Although I get the feeling for the for the rest of October, it's going to be less comfy streams because I'm I'm going for like the the creepy themes. I'm going going seasonal. Dracula is playing the less comfy games that I don't like to play the rest of the year because I like to be comfy. <laughs> but uh, I'm excited. I I've, I've got a, a couple other games planned which I'm really looking forward to playing because they look really interesting. They look really really cool and I'm excited to check them out. I hope they are actually decent though because because <laughs> this one game I looked up I was like this seems intriguing this seems really interesting and it has good reviews but I've not seen anyone play it and I don't know much about it so it's going to be like a real random choice of stream like it could be great it could be terrible. I don't know. We will find out together either next week or the week after. <laughs> but uh, I do want to do more sticky business again, though. I want to make some, like, a proper Halloween set of stickers. And I will be playing House Flipper as well this month. I want to do, like, a, a Halloween-themed house. <laughs> I want to buy, like, a tiny house in House Flipper 2 and then renovate it to be all, like, like red, black, orange purple <laughs> make it thematic I feel like it'd be fun also Thermo hello g -g -g greetings to you too you greet you support you lurk you nurse your 39c wait what are you are you ill at the moment oh I hope you feel better I hope you feel better soon thank you for the lurk though I really appreciate it sending healing beams your way although I I don't know how many of those I have <laughs> 
but thank you for stopping in. But yes, um, I, I've got some cool games planned. And of course, there's Inscription at the weekend, which is incredible. I didn't know what to expect from it. It was so much better than I was expecting. And I'm, I'm really excited for Sunday. Like, the only thing I have in my head for Sunday stream, I am just sat here like, I want to break that cage. I want to break the cage. I got it. There was a, a card with a cage. I want to break the cage. That's like the only thing going through my mind at the moment. There's, there's so many other things as well in the game. That's just <laughs> the only thing I'm thinking of that I could do. That and just like progress in the game. I don't know how many bosses there are. It'll be interesting. But yes, I, I like October because like for the rest of the year, I like to keep games like less horror based because I know a lot of people don't like horror and for me as well like I have to be in the mood for horror stuff so I don't want people to like come into the stream expecting like a really comfy cozy stream and then it's suddenly just like hey this is a survival horror game like that's not comfy I like my comfy streams <laughs> but that's also like why I like horror that has more of like an uneasy atmosphere as well because then it's still not super intense like I can still keep the comfy vibes and just be like oh dear this isn't good <laughs> but um but yeah there's there's been a couple games that I've been adding to my list through the year like that could be a good October game and it's finally time for me to play them and th this has been like top of the list this was the one where I was just like there is no way I am not playing this in October because one Addy Rosa, like I'm, I'm <laughs> two Addy Rosa. <laughs> uh, I also know Laura as well, who does the the writing and is another part of the team. Uh, I I know like two out of three of the team members for this game, I think. But uh, it's funny because it's called like L Cubed, I think is the team name like the development team name, because Addy Rosa used to go by the, the screen name Laniessa, and then there were like complications and stuff and she changed it to Addy Rosa, but they all had names beginning with L. <laughs> but now she's A. And I'm the L. I'm, I've, I've stole, I stole the L, the L initial. <laughs> but oh, I forgot to write for you, but oh, I hope you feel better soon. And so the way I will. I will. I must. I must release Wolf from Cage. Wolves deserve to be free. <laughs> but yeah, I'm really excited to play this. I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, oh, before I start, too, I kind of just want to show. I want to show off the thumbnail I made for the stream, just because I think it's pretty. <laughs> Boop. Here it is. Here's the thumbnail I made for the stream. Because I was I was trying to make a nice thumbnail and I was like, well, I'm I'm literally made with Adi art, so, <laughs> so I know it can blend well. But uh, I ended up using the sketch she did for me as a birthday gift. This is the art she did for me for my birthday, and I was just like playing around with random random images and stuff, sticking them on the on the official key art, and this happened, and I was like, oh, it's so pretty, it's so pretty, I have to. So I really love how it turned out. I think I think it's a pretty thumbnail. And Theo, hello! Thank you. I I one thing I always like to do is I like to make thumbnails for all of my streams. It's why I don't really play like unscheduled games very often. Because I'm always like, well I can't just play a random game, I need to have a thumbnail made for it. But I find it so fun. It's something I did like right from the beginning when I started streaming. Like three three years and nine months ago oh my goodness it really has been so long so long but i love making thumbnails i think it's fun <laughs> but welcome in happy women wednesday i'm i'm so excited to revisit this because i haven't played it in years so i remember some elements of it i remember aspects of it but there's going to be a lot that i have forgotten so uh, for a start, I don't remember how to get the endings, so I figured the first thing I'm going to do is just go through it and see what I would instinctively pick, what my, like, what my default ending would be if I picked the options I felt like. 
And then I'll start trying to get all the other endings because I'm, I'm a completionist and I want them. And then I will look at the extras and the bonus content. Oh, where is my cursor? There it is. <laughs> But yes, um, please be warned as well, though, anyone coming in. This is a pretty dark game. It has some very dark subject matter in it. So if you think you might be affected by that, I will actually post the content warnings as the game starts. So I'm pretty sure there's a, there's a warning list at the start of the game. So I'm going to do that so that people are aware. But yes, please be aware. This is... Um, it can get pretty dark. It, it can. But that's why it's so beautiful, honestly. Alright, let's, let's start. When cold, cruel destiny has thee within her grasp. Oh, I think because I already loaded the game once, the content warning screen doesn't show up. Oopsie. Oopsie. Let me go back to title and see if I can make that pop up again. If not, I'll just type it. Hold on. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just copy paste it from the, the Steam page. <laughs> Oopsie, my bad. I'll do it as a pinned message too, so people are aware. Bloop, there it is. There it is. Make sure it's up there so people know. Because, especially for games like this, that they're so amazing to play. But if suddenly there's like content you're not expecting out of nowhere, it can be a little, a little much sometimes. Like I'm pretty lucky in that I don't really tend to get affected by fictional media in terms of like content warnings and stuff. Um, I, uh, I grew up on the internet. I'm desensitized to a lot of stuff that I probably shouldn't be. <laughs> but there's still some stuff where if it happens in like a, a fictional media context, I would still much rather be aware of it. It's specifically two things. It is eye trauma and it is animal death. Those are the two things that I like to be aware of before I go into things. <laughs> but uh, anything else I'm, I'm like, yeah. Fiction does not equal reality. It's I can I can disconnect, I guess. <laughs> but yes, I've got the content warnings up. Let's let's actually start the game. I'm so excited. When cold, cruel destiny has thee within her grasp, thou may endeavor bravely, dear, to change thy path. But fate cares not which twisted road you choose to take. Your dance atop her palm, with airy choice you make. Oh, the voice is, the voice is perfect. The voicing is perfect. Day one. Here we go. Actually, before we start, I'm, I'm going to treat myself to a to a cheeky little self-redeem. Cheeky little point redeem for myself. Ow, I, I forgot I would hit myself in the head with that. <laughs> Thank you for the hydrate me. I just really want to open this up. Today it is peach time. I have the, the Monster Energy Ultra Peachy Keen. And it's also uh, my last kind of monster, so I need to go to the shop Gym. tomorrow. <laughs> but I have my monster. Thank you for the gym as well. Hold on. Every time I get like a gym redeem now, I feel like I just want to go like. Gym. 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 Bonus gyms. <laughs> but yes, monster time. Scary monsters for October. The scariest monster, the energy drink that just tastes like you've eaten a peach. The energy peach. Oh, I'm so happy. Oh, thank you for the glasses too! Oh my goodness. Yeah, I usually put my glasses on when I'm playing visual novels. I fully forgot about them. Thank you so much. I can actually read now. <laughs> thank you for the glasses, Redeem. I decided to wear my casual outfit today as well because I've been wearing the, the Magical Girl one all month so far. And I wanted to show that I've dracula this one as well. But if anyone wants to change that, you're free to as well. But I got a pin. I have a without a voice pin on today as well. 
It's a pin that I actually own in real life. <laughs> I think I actually own it twice. I have, yeah, I have two of, two of this pin. <laughs> it was a morning like any other. Also, yes, its darkness is matched by its ethereal beauty. It really is. I'm, I, I've got such a soft spot for like dark fantasy. I think it's so incredible. Because when you think about fairy tales, a lot of the time you think about like how they've been softened for children to enjoy. But a lot of original fairy tales are super, super dark. And it is so, so interesting. It's such a great, a great concept to explore. The darkness and the beauty, the beauty and darkness. It was a morning like any other. The tragedy soon to unfold would affect so few people that time would swiftly forget it. For those involved, however, that morning was a maelstrom, drawing them each in, closer and closer still. It all began innocently enough with a certain exiled princess in a terrible predicament. Ah! Oh dear. Run out of firewood. There she is. Oh my goodness. Cassidy. It's so funny. Every time I see Cassidy, I always immediately think of Addie. <laughs> because for the longest time of knowing Addie, she had Cassidy as her icon for like everything. Cassidy was just like her permanent avatar for so many things. So now when I see Cassidy, I just <laughs> think of her. <laughs> I love it. And I always kind of associate Elowen with lore in my head as well, because they they had Elowen as their icon for the longest time too. It's I, did, I got used to seeing it on my timeline. Sarah SL40 is also Eve MPG. Yeah, I, I, I also associate her icon with her as well. <laughs> it's always so funny how there end up being people where I kind of grow to recognize them because they use the same icon for the longest amount of time. And then suddenly they will change that icon and I'll be like, hold on, who are you? <laughs> Wait, this isn't right. See, it's, it's why it's, um, it's nice being a VTuber because I just use myself. And whatever icon I change to, it's still always just gonna be me. It's, it's very nice. But uh, for the longest time as well, um, before I was a VTuber too, I was, very much associated with Frederica Miyamoto from the Idol Master Cinderella Girls. <laughs> and I would always have my icon as um, some kind of Frederica art. So I, I, I definitely confused a few people when I became a VTuber and started using myself as my icon. They were like, but dear, you're the Frederica girl. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Uh, this game. Uh, this is only like a, this is a fairly short game, but knowing me and how long it takes me to play visual novels, it may end up being like a, a two week dealy. <laughs> I might end up coming back to it next week if I don't get through everything, but we'll see how it goes. Maybe, maybe I will be swift, she says doubtfully. <laughs> only I'd noticed yesterday. This has caught me quite unawares. Oh, goodness gracious. The ex-princess in question was named Cassidy, and she was the eldest child of the kingdom of Veramir. Veramir? 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 It's, it's the, the fantasy problem again of not knowing how to pronounce things, so I will simply make my own decision. What's that you say? You've never heard of Veramir? One shouldn't be surprised. This all happened long before the universe summoned you into existence. The next shipment isn't due for a little while yet. Oh no, you're gonna have to get your own. But I cannot wait. I won't be able to cook or do laundry without a fire. So long had the princess had been living in this cottage alone that she'd taken to talking to herself just to feel less lonely. Determined to gather some wood before sundown, Cassidy grabbed a hatchet and some linen and then quitted the place. Once outside, she paused, considering for the umpteenth time whether it would be best for her to lock the door. No one will come in anyway. My brother's agents never enter. 
No one else travels this deep into the wood. I could not imagine leaving the house and not locking the door. <laughs> like, ever. I, even, even if I do leave the house just to go to the shop across the road, I still lock the door every time. Unless there's someone else in the house downstairs and I'm like, I'm just going across the road, I'll leave the door unlocked. I, I cannot imagine. But then again, I don't live in the middle of the woods with nobody else around, so... Yeah. Convincing herself so, Cassidy turned away and headed into the forest to begin her mission. Unfortunately, her determination and willpower were short-lived. <sighs> As I thought, firewood isn't just lying on the ground just waiting to be picked up. Yeah. Though she'd brought the hatchet, she'd foolishly hoped she wouldn't have to use it. Faced with so many different types of trees, most of them quite large, she was unsure how to proceed. Now that I think about it, how much firewood do I usually use at once? Oh, the more I try to remember, the more adult I get. Perhaps I'll just subsist on fruits and fungus until the next crate arrives. A timely stomach growl quickly put a stop to such plans. Cassidy let out a sigh. <sighs> For now, then, I shall return to my favorite place. It always brings me peace. Yay, hold on, I need to sit up straight. I'm sitting in a very weird position at the moment. A lot of this stuff, like my mic stand and my mic arm and stuff, I have a feeling the screws are starting to loosen in it because... It keeps slipping, and then I keep, like, adjusting myself to, like, match up with it, and then I realize I'm sitting in a really weird position. <laughs> Hold on, let me... How's that? I... This is better? I think this is better. <laughs> there we go. Let me... Let me try this. That place holds some magic I've always felt. I'm sure I shall be able to think of something once I'm there. I'm sure. Her spirit restored, Cassidy hefted her linen satchel a little higher. It was not long until she would be comfortable again, she thought. Mm. Why, you're as radiant as ever. She's so pretty. <laughs> Cassidy's so pretty. Ah, I, I love the little smile and the blushy face. There were many views to take pleasure in in this forest, but this one in particular always brought her delight. Though she had lived here for some seasons, the tree before her seemed to never change. Or ne seemed, seemed never to change. I'm just rearranging the words as I please. I don't know much about wisteria. Are they meant to stay in bloom year-round? Perhaps the winters here are mild. Yeah, perhaps that was, that's what it is. <laughs> Wisteria shall wither not when flakes of winter fall, yet all must someday perish, while heeding nature's call. But nature wields not power or a soul. A clear wind chime voice caught Cassidy's attention. <gasps> Cassidy's heart stuck in her throat as she followed the sound and caught sight of the woman sitting there. She had never before seen a woman so breathtakingly beautiful. My apologies for interrupting your poem, madam. It, it was only a couplet. You did not interrupt so much as improve it. A collaboration. <laughs> oh, then all the better. But it is not safe to be so deep in the wood. Terry not. I live here. It is quite safe, I assure you. I dare say I have lived here much longer than you have. No harm has ever come to me in these woods. Yet. Perhaps our I mean, experiences what? merely <laughs> differ. I mean, what? why would I say that? Everything's fine. Certainly. I concede your point. Cassidy paused a long while. Unsure of how to carry on the conversation. How strange. I used to make small talk with all the couriers as if it were nothing. Has time truly affected me so? 
You... you say you live here? Yeah? I do. I have never seen you. I'm quite sure of it. I would remember someone like you. <laughs> yeah, so would I, honestly. Whereabouts do you live? If you don't mind my asking. Hardly a stone's throw from where we now stand. A stone's throw? I mean, do a little save. A little save for the options. Right, how do I want to start this? A stone's throw? I, I really like, like, the thought of, like, innocent Cassidy. I don't think she would be suspect in this situation, personally, because pretty woman. So, how can that be? I suppose she does not wish to expose where she lives to an utter stranger. That is reasonable. She seems to be quite on her guard. I envy your view of this lovely place. Do not envy me. What could that mean? How droll. Oh, where are my manners? My name is Cassidy. I, too, live nearby. You may call me Elowen. Elowen. What a lovely name. Besides, I was already aware that you live nearby. What? How? I have seen you before, albeit from a distance. You come here often. <laughs> oh dear, I must have been making a complete fool of myself. I am sorry that you've had to witness that. Oh, bless her. <laughs> she's not even worried about, like, wait, you've seen me before, but I've never seen you. Stalker, she's just immediately like, oh, I, I must have embarrassed myself. <laughs> Honestly, big mood. Cassidy thought back to all the complaining she'd done under this tree. And all the times she'd sullied herself trying to gather fruit. There were many other truly mortifying memories. She stared at the ground in shame. When she looked up, however, Elowen was smiling. Cassidy felt her tension wane. So what brings you back to this place? I wanted to calm myself. Calm yourself? What for? What could possibly cause you distress? What a sour tone. Does she think I just daydream and laze about all day? Many things! I'll have you know that at this very minute, I am on a mission that might mean the difference between life and death. Oh, and yet you dally here. What could this mission involve, pray tell? <laughs> I'll just humor her. <laughs> I see my presence is not wanted here. I shall return to my search forthwith. Just as she was about to turn away and leave Elowen and the wisteria tree behind, Cassidy heard Elowen laugh softly. It was a bewitching sound. I see I have offended, milady. No offense was meant, I can assure. <laughs> milady. I don't know, I'm, I'm not sitting properly in my chair. Oh my goodness. Uh, this is always like the worst part of whenever I wake up late. Usually like when I'm preparing for streams, I'm sat for like an hour before the stream making sure everything is ready. I had to rush today. <laughs> I was in a rush today and nothing is in the position it should be. I'm silly, it's okay. Okay. I think I'm... I'm removing my blanket. I've, I've got a blanket around my shoulders at the moment. Because it's getting really, really cold in the UK at the moment. But I don't think I want my blanket. I think my blanket is simply getting in the way. <laughs> okay, I think I'm good. I say again, third time's the charm. <laughs> right. Really? Truly. I would never wish to cause you pain. Tell me of your mission. I have run out of firewood. 
Upon hearing this, Eloin stood up and dusted herself off. Allow me to be of service. Help from beautiful woman? Thank you. Oh no, I couldn't possibly impose. Please. This tree suffers so much every time you shed your tears and frustration upon it. <gasps> Do it for the tree. <laughs> Yet, despite her abrasive words, Eloin was tirelessly helpful. It was she who taught Cassidy to gather smaller bits of kindling, and to use the hatchet when that proved insufficient. If you wrap these smaller branches together, they shall burn just fine. I see! Oh, I am certainly glad not to have to chop down a whole tree. I was worried about that. Yes. Once felled, a tree can never rise again. Mm. Take of them their fruit, their branches, but spare them their roots and lifeblood. Lifeblood? Do trees have blood? This forest is quite old, you know. How old? Oh my goodness, my mic stand is so creaky. I wish it would stop. <laughs> I wish it would stay forever this way. But man has trouble leaving things be. Yeah. The disparity between Eloin's indifferent expression and the biting tone of her voice made Cassidy's heart ache. <laughs> she must love trees. <laughs> I'm gonna go with, she must have had a bad experience. We humans are meddlesome things, aren't we? Perhaps I'm making too light of her feelings. I thought that was rather an intelligent thing to say. You truly love this forest. Yes. In fact, I feel that I am part of it. And it is part of me. How beautiful. The two continued through the forest, gathering wood and passing the time with easy conversation. As they walked leisurely, the sun began to sink. So too did the satchel of wood over Cassidy's shoulder sag. It seems that you've gathered plenty of wood now. Surely that will be enough? Yeah, that should last a while. Ah, uh, you're right! The time had quite gotten away from the exiled princess. Now that their afternoon together was coming to an end, Cassidy was... Afraid. Afraid and hopeful, which was perhaps more dangerous still. Then... Excuse me, Miss Elowen? Yes? Might I... That is, might we meet again? Ooh. You've no idea how happy I am to meet another person living in this wood. And... And a woman at that... What's that supposed to mean, Cassidy? <laughs> Yet the expression on Elowen's face showed that she had, in fact, some idea. <laughs> you shipped them. Hi, Autumn! Me too. Me too. Look at them. Look at them. Welcome in. Welcome, welcome. Happy Women Wednesday. Look at these women. I love them. <laughs> I was about to suggest the same. Oh my? You might find me in this area most afternoons. Uh -huh. I see. Then, until tomorrow. Would that we meet so soon, my lady. With that, Elowen bowed and left. Look at the little blush. <laughs> Her steps make almost no sound. What a graceful woman. Not just beautiful, but elegant and smart. Just the perfect catch, pretty much, right? As she walked back to her cottage, so filled with thoughts of Elowen was her head, that Cassidy forgot all about her fatigue and the weight of her burden. She certainly is opinionated, 
but she must have so much more experience living independently than I. I hope I am not a bother to her. And with that, the once princess returned home, blissfully unaware of the roots that were this very moment grabbing hold of her heels and pulling her beneath. Oh my. It is said a fool repeats his days, changing not but expecting change. I posit these men are by routine hogtied. They expect not, and are by not satisfied. What a great poem. Day two. There is a sort of melancholy one feels when closing a book for the final time. Feeling its last words wash over you as you leave its world and return to your own life. It was an ennui that Cassidy had grown used to. In her former life, she had received the best education that money and bribery might buy. Now, that bright mind was left to languish, fed by nothing more than a single new book each fortnight. By now, Cassidy was in the habit of reading very slowly indeed. She shut her latest tome and placed it upon the table, next to her half-written letter to her brother. I never sound quite myself in these letters. How do you write from a distance to one whom you once saw daily? And how do you write anything at all when your life has grown so... so dull? Yeah, just be like, hello, brother. Today, I did nothing again. Tomorrow, I will proceed to do nothing. Might read two pages. Yours. <laughs> She decided to pen a few more sentences on how moved she felt after reading the book and how profoundly distressed she was by the ending of it. Family is important, but so too is recognizing the value of what you have before it is too late. If only the king had realized what a wonderful daughter he had. And I hope that you realize how much you are loved by me, your one and only sister. She paused, overcome by sheer feeling, and decided to keep that final bit to herself. It was too desperate for comfort, and princesses do not whinge so. No, that won't do at all. How unbecoming. My <laughs> little pout. <laughs> With a sigh, Cassidy stared at the crackling fire. She had more than enough firewood now to last until her next shipment of it. The sight reminded her of Elowen. I wonder what Elowen is doing at this very moment. I wonder. She could not fathom. The day-to-day -day life of such a mysterious personage was utterly beyond her imagination. Her curiosity so engaged, it was now impossible to ignore. And so, the fair Cassidy resolved herself to take a walk and casually seek the other woman out. Very Perhaps casual. I'll even stumble across where she lives today. Wouldn't it be exciting to surprise her at her home? <laughs> Thinking nothing at all of how inconvenient, how overly forward and impertinent it might be, she departed immediately. Once outside, Cassidy took in a deep lungful of crisp forest air. <sighs> how lovely it is today. Hardly a cloud in the sky. Beautiful day. She took measured steps into the forest, constantly scanning the area around her, on the lookout for this elusive domicile. Might Elowen live in a cottage like mine? She is so elegant, I cannot imagine her doing housework. Then again, I could hardly imagine myself doing housework not so long ago. Oh, how times change a person. Cassidy reached her beloved wisteria tree before long and eagerly drank in the sight of it. She ran up to the tree and encircled it with her arms as if meaning to embrace it. Hello, dear tree. You are looking as lovely as ever today. 
Though a certain someone sits not beneath your bows this afternoon. She leaned to one side and then another, looking around the tree and into the forest to see if she might spy a window or the billowing of chimney smoke. Sadly, she could make out only more trees. I can't suppose that Elowen lives in a tree house, does she? Certainly not. <laughs> oh, hi. Oh! oh! <laughs> Startled, Cassidy jumped, her foot catching unhappily on one of the tree's roots, sending her flailing forward. Careful. Elowen's arm shot out at once, her vice-like grip snaring the once princess just in time. Elowen's touch was so cold, yet her movements decisive. Cassidy's heart raced. Thank you for the hydrate! Oh, yeah. L l leave him to it for a second. Let me have a sip. Thank you. Thank you for the hydrate and bolster check. I got a sip of my monster. I gotta have a big stretch. I hydrate for the thirsty Cassidy. <laughs> oh, I I love Cassidy so much. She's she's just so easily flustered. I think it's very sweet. I've I've got a soft spot for just like the the kind of hopelessness, which I say in like a complimentary way. I love hopeless characters. <laughs> Was she truly worried for me? Oh, I'll have a stretch. I'll have another stretch. There we go. Was she truly worried for me? It took Cassidy several moments to regain her composure. Elowen, too, looked a bit shaken. <sighs> Thank goodness you arrived when you did. Though, truth be told, if you hadn't startled me so, I would not have fallen. Well... It's okay, it evens out. Is that so? I shall endeavor to be less frightening in the future, then. Oh dear, she may have mistaken my meaning. I was only trying to cover up my embarrassment. Boop, 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 let's do a little cheeky save. Perhaps she was joking. Seems very jokey, it's just, she doesn't seem mad. Perhaps she was joking. On second thought, was that, perhaps, a joke? <laughs> you look much better with a smile. Yeah. As do you. Still, how curious it is for us to be meeting here again. It's almost like fate, isn't it? You come here often. I live nearby. What is curious about it? Don't, don't doubt fate. It's, it's definitely fate. It's not coincidence. I'm merely saying that it is serendipitous. It must be fate. It must be. It must be. So right. Same, same wavelength. Same brain. Same brain cells. Do, do I want the same brain cells as Cassidy? No, yeah, I do. Fate has nothing to do with it, I assure you. Oh, but it's so much more romantic to think of it as fate. Oh, I, th she's... Oh, I love Cassidy. <laughs> I can think of nothing less romantic than fate. Oh. Hmm? Perhaps this is something not yet possible for you to understand. Don't speak as though you're much older and wiser than me. Elowen laughed a little. How old are you, anyway? How old do you think? Oh, that's a dangerous question. <laughs> Cassidy stared at Elowen, gazing deeply into her eyes, as if she might find the other woman's secrets there. Hmm. Older than I first thought, perhaps. I love this, this face. <laughs> Just Cassidy's little he face. A wise answer. Elowen tipped her head slightly, the motion seeming to indicate a desire to walk on. Cassidy was only too happy to comply. Together, the two women strolled. Extra the, the. 
Their time together was marked by companionable silence. Cassidy, never before a quiet girl, was desperate to fill it. But what, but what conversation might pique Elowin's interest was unclear. She peered shyly at Elowin's face in profile. So striking and noble did it seem. She has the air of an aristocrat. What could someone like she be doing living in the forest? Then again, am I not in the same position? Perhaps it's something she finds difficult to speak of. An icy gust of wind whistled through the clearing, causing Cassidy to shiver and rub her bare arms. The sun will be setting soon and it will grow colder. Perhaps you should... It was then that the question Cassidy had been ruminating on all, over all afternoon burst forth. Would you like to come to my cottage? She's so forward. <laughs> She's so forward, honestly. In the world of Yuri, it's refreshing. I, I love the forwardness. I would never be able to. I, I'm the kind of person who would just wait like five years and then be like well my time's gone now i i, I missed my opportunity <laughs> elowen appeared quite overcome is that wise i don't think she cares if it's wise or not <laughs> whatever do you mean how can you extend such an invitation to one such as me whom you hardly know you are entirely too trusting statue. Two solitary women ought to stick together out in these wilds. Besides, who else have I to invite? So true. So true. Gotta stick together. I am... That is, I sometimes feel quite lonely out here. Don't you? Elowen turned her head slightly and gazed into the forest behind them, as if peering at something only she could see. Loneliness, then. I see. Very well. I will take you up on your offer. Nice. Though puzzled by Elowen's hesitation, Cassidy was overjoyed that her invitation had been accepted. There was a spring in her step as she led the other woman to her home. It was only in front of the cottage that Cassidy suddenly understood what an impetuous thing it was that she was doing. <laughs> How can you extend such an invitation to one such as me, whom you hardly know? Oh, uh, well, you're pretty. <laughs> you're pretty, you can't be bad, right? Is the house clean enough? She could not seem to recall when she had last swept or aired out her bedding. Is this where you live? Yes. It's charming. Ah, uh, yes. Well, thank you. I wish I could take more credit for that. The house was here long before I arrived. Even the furniture is not truly my own. Still, it suits you. It does. This kind of cottage really suits Cassidy. Thank you. Bolstered by Elowen's reaction, Cassidy finally gained the courage to follow through. She opened the door wide, gesturing for the other woman to enter. As Elowen did so with her usual slow, measured steps, Cassidy could not help but notice the other woman's feet, clearly visible in the slippers she wore. Feet? Her toes are curled. How odd. They stayed that way even as Elowen entered the house. Perhaps her manner of walking is not purely for the sake of elegance, but also necessity. Had Elowen some sort of pain in her feet? Cassidy pondered on this and resolved to ask about it when the opportunity arose. It is quite spacious. You live here, alone? That's right. Hmm. 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 It's not so bad. I don't have anyone to tell me what to do or where to go. 
I have a freedom now that I'd never known before. Yeah, Cassidy just here like, it's it's not so bad. I, I can do whatever I want. So long as it, I can do it in this cottage with nothing here. <laughs> Perhaps. But sometimes I believe that being tied down to something is easier. Ah. If you don't realize you're being strangled, <laughs> it's just a pleasant, lightheaded feeling. Wow. Hmm? I don't really understand. <gasps> wow. It's all right if you don't. <laughs> Eloin walked slowly from one part of the room to the next, her fingertips ghosting over every surface. She looked to be seeking the essence of each object, taking in every minute flaw and deciphering its true nature. Cassidy wondered what Eloin might discover about her, if only she allowed it. If only she dared. <laughs> It was unbearably quiet. Just then, Eloin came across the book Cassidy had finished reading. Oh, that's a book my brother sent to me. I get so frightfully bored here that these books have become my sanctuary. I'm expecting a new shipment soon. Your brother? Eloin was silent for a time, digesting that new information. And then her eyes fell on the half-finished letter haphazardly placed next to the book. Cassidy followed her gaze. Eyes wide, she leapt forward to snatch the letter away. How much had the other woman seen? She coloured in mortification. Your brother is far away from here. Yes. Yeah. Is it beautiful? The place where you once both lived... I have not once seen its equal. More beautiful than this cottage prison of yours? Prison? Cassidy could not hide her surprise at Eloin's poisonous choice of words. Nor could she hide her sudden tears. Ooh. Excuse me? I do not appreciate your tone. I notice you do not disagree with me, however. It is kind of a prison. <laughs> I most decidedly do! You don't understand how much my brother cares for me. You are correct in at least one thing there. Mm. Cassidy angrily dried her tears. Eloin looked to the window. It has gotten dark. Oh my! How rude of me. I have not offered you tea or any refreshment. Do not trouble yourself on my account. I must away. Mm. I do not mean to impose for so long. Oof. Oh, you are hardly an imposition. You are kind. And good. Cassidy's face lit up. I, I love how it went from like being super upset to just like a single compliment and she's just like, oh? Really? <laughs> kind and good things do not survive long in a world such as ours. Mm. And just as quickly as it had come, the sudden rush of delight left her. Bowing her head, the other woman was out the door and gone, leaving hurt and confusion in her wake. I have to believe that Alexander loves me. If not, what will become of me? When she looked out the window to glimpse the same view that Eloin had just beheld, what Cassidy saw before her was but a bleak uncertainty. Without wisdom or experience, storm shall ill-weathered be. But when you are nearby, dear one, no storms can bother me. Oh. Day three. The exiled princess paused on the very first line of her letter. To my dear Alexander. Is that too familiar? Will he dislike it? 
The brother of her memory was a kind boy, but rather stiff, and particularly mindful of decorum. Following the events of the previous evening, Cassidy felt compelled to rewrite her half-finished letter. Boop. Ooh, decisions. Not that Alexander would care. I want Alexander to see me at my best. I, I think I'm going to do this one. Not that Alexander would care. Not that Alexander will care either way. I'm sure he's too busy to even read my letters through. Still, I want him to know how I spend my days. I feel less alone when I read his letters, and if mine can ease his spirits, then it's a worthwhile endeavor. Cassidy finished the letter without much of a fuss. She wrote briefly of Eloan, a passerby, helping her find firewood. Hold on, let's have a look at this. Here we go. To my dear Alexander. I hope that this letter finds you well, dear brother. I have greatly enjoyed the last book you sent me. However, it has such a sad ending. Even though the father loved his youngest daughter, yet loved his youngest daughter so, it all came to nothing in the end. Both of them died. Can there be any worse fate than to die at your loved one's hand? I dare say not. The book has given me much to think about, though I do hope you send a happier tome next time. I do begin to tire of reading such dreary works. My life here is not so sad, you see. I have lived well thanks to your kindness. I did run into some trouble the other day when I ran out of firewood, but a passerby helped me to gather more, so all was well. Most of the contents, however, were in regards to the book she had recently finished. Perhaps this will encourage my dear brother to send me more. Also, Sunken Shell, hello! Welcome, welcome! Happy Women Wednesday! Welcome to Without a Voice. I am... Uh, I'm... <laughs> I'm forgetting how to speak. I'm gonna have a sip. <laughs> Welcome in. I'm playing a, a Dark Yuri game, which um, I played this when it first came out a very long time ago. And um, I've, I've forgotten a lot of the details for the plot, so I'm extremely excited to revisit it. <laughs> yes, more books is never a bad thing. Yes, uh, so far we have Cassidy. Um, she's a princess. She's an exiled princess. She has been sent to live here by her brother, the prince. And he sends her a book every fortnight, and then she's alone in the forest, and they send each other letters. So everything is great. Everything is lovely. She's having a great time. She's extremely bored, but she found a beautiful woman in the forest. So things are looking up. <laughs> but yes, happy Women Wednesday. When Cassidy looked out the window, she realized the sun had started to set. Oh dear. Is I revising for so long? Silly me. Silly Cassidy. She folded up her letter and placed it in an envelope, sealing it with the royal wax seal she was given. She stood and stretched her arms above her head. Mm. I have hardly moved all day. That is no good. Oh, yeah, that's no good. You'll just have to go for a leisurely stroll over to the tree. <laughs> right? Cassidy walked to the front of the cottage, where she normally left her letters halfway beneath the door for an agent to collect. She had just stuffed her letter under the door when... Princess? Hello? Cassidy's blood ran cold for just a moment. Yet soon, yet she soon realized who was addressing her and relaxed. Ah, oh, you surprised me, Elowen. Hi. She spoke to the other woman through the half-opened window at the front of the cottage. I am no princess, you know. Is that so? You seem like one to me. Mm. Cassidy was not sure how to respond to that sentiment. Have I casually let slip that I was a princess? I did not realize that I still behaved in the manner of one. Lifelong habits cannot so soon be discarded, it seems. There is an envelope under the door. Oh, yes. Uh, do leave it there. It's outgoing. Outgoing? 
Owen paused for a long while, but said no more on the subject. May I come in? Of course! I'm so sorry. I should have invited you sooner. I was so taken aback, you see. A surprise, beautiful woman. I did not mean to surprise you so. It's all right. A happy surprise. I am so glad to see you. She opened the door and ushered Elowen inside. This time, Cassidy did not forget her manners. She quickly flew into the kitchen to make her guests some tea and pulled out the crackers she'd set aside for just such an occasion. Having a guest. Elowen politely sipped the tea but did, did not touch the crackers. Hmm? Hmm? can either go, I suppose she's already eaten, or I wonder why she does not eat. Let's be curious, let's be curious. I wonder why she does not eat. I wonder why she does not eat. Perhaps these are not to her taste. It seems a, wa it seems a waste when I saved these crackers purposely in order to be a good hostess when next she came. Though she was confused, Cassidy quietly ate a cracker or two before putting the tray away. The two women talked pleasantries for some time, though it became rather apparent that Elowen's attention lay elsewhere. Is everything quite all right? Why do you ask? You seem somewhat reserved. Mm hmm? That is more than usual. Hmm? That letter. Ah. Uh. Hmm? You said it was outgoing. Is that the letter you wrote your brother? Maybe. Oh, yes. If I leave the letters there, someone will come collect it. Someone? How can that be? You do not go into town to have your mail delivered? She was at a loss as to how to explain. Cassidy herself knew that her situation was extraordinary. You see, though I live alone, I am well taken care of. Yeah. My brother provides everything. Yes, you're well taken care of. You just can't leave. <laughs> that's, that's completely fine and normal, yes. Every fortnight or so, his agents deliver food and supplies to me. Someone is around to collect my outgoing letters once or twice a day. I only ever send my brother letters, of course. Mm -hmm. I was not wrong when I said this place was like a jail. You were <laughs> completely normal, totally normal. OMG, Tim, hi. <laughs> hi, Uncle Tim, welcome. Welcome on in. Welcome to Dark Yuri. Happy Women Wednesday. Welcome in. I have no idea which ending I'm going to get first. I'm curious. Sorry, everyone. OMG Dracula Leary, hi. It's okay, you can shorten it. Shorten it to Leary. I, I, I'm still the same person. <laughs> but welcome, welcome. Why do you live here alone? When he clearly has enough resources to take care of you. Cassidy shifted uncomfortably in her seat. It's for your own good, right? He's just looking after you, right? He's just protecting you, right? Right? Elowen's eyes seemed to not to look at her so much as bore into her soul. Cassidy felt judged and deemed unworthy, though she had not yet responded to Elowen's inquiry. No matter how she phrased it in her head, it sounded awful. I am here for my own safety. I... She took a deep breath. When you called me princess earlier, you were not far off the mark. I once was a princess, though I am no longer. After my father, the king's death, I was to inherit the mm. throne. 
but our barons in Parliament voted no confidence. Worse, I was then handed trumped up charges of treason. I very well could have been executed. Woo! Instead, my younger brother intervened on my behalf. So instead of being executed, you are exiled. So you are. So much better. Alive. An exile. But alive. The former princess surprised herself at the depth of her own feelings, at the desperation with which she tried to convince her... in which she tried to convince especially herself that this was for the best. That turned dark. This whole this whole game is dark. This is a dark game. There's a reason why there are the, the content warnings around. <laughs> this is a dark game. Please expect dark topics. It's not so terrible. This cottage is lovely. It is a good thing to be among nature like this. It is. It's, it's lovely. Everything is fine. Everything is wonderful. How can you be so positive? I feel like she kind of has to be. Like, if she stops being positive, then it's... <laughs> it's just that kind of desperate hope. Just clinging to, like, if she keeps telling herself it's okay, then it'll be okay, right? Like, if she loses that, then she's... She just loses. <laughs> Whew. What? You speak so fondly of your brother. When he is the one who exiled you... Who left you here to rot in isolation? It's not like that, Elowen. Mm. What part of what I said is false? Tell me. I... It's not that simple. It is not Alexander's fault. Mm. As a result of your dear Alexander's intervention, you were exiled, were you not? Who's to say he was not responsible oh. for the unfavorable vote in the first place? Oh, that's a really big accusation. That is a huge accusation to make after three days. <laughs> Why would he do that? What would he have to gain? Well, I presume he has the throne now, right? As, as the, the sibling. It is not... My brother's fault. He could have let them kill me, but I am alive thanks to him. I've previously stated my belief that you are kind and good. <sighs> I have now revised my opinion. <laughs> you are a blind fool. Oof. As I am mute, you are blind. Altogether too blind to the selfish ways of the world. What is your meaning? It is nothing. Believe in your brother all you wish. But you cannot deny that there is a truth to what I've said. <sighs> Elowen rose from her seat in one swift movement, and then headed for the door. Good night, princess. I am princess no longer. Mock me not, I beg you. <laughs> just like that, she was gone. Disappeared into the dark. Well, that went well. Cassidy wrapped her arms around her torso, hugging herself for comfort in the wake of Elowen's sudden, indignant anger. Feeling comfort none, the former princess squeezed her eyes shut. Oh, Alexander, if only she knew you as I do, then she would understand. There is a treasure that can't be bought, no matter how long it may be sought. It is something priceless, yet free. I speak, of course, of an apology. Day four. I have a horrible feeling I know which ending I'm heading towards. I guess we will find out. Um, <laughs> um, 
everything's fine. After a restless sleep, Cassidy awoke to the sun's harsh rays. Mm. Mm. She stretched, arching her back to release the tension there. Finally, her gaze went to the front door. There was a distinct lack of a letter beneath it. They must have come in the night. How diligent my brother's agents are. You are a blind fool. All at once, the memories of her argument with Elowen nearly knocked the wind out of her. I cannot believe I divulged such secrets to someone I barely know. Mm. Cassidy was puzzled, both at herself and at Elowen's odd behavior. Right, let's do a little save. What a shock that was. I'm sure she had her reasons. Mmm. Hmm, I'm sure she had her reasons. Elowen appeared so upset. I wonder if she experienced something similar. Perhaps my blind optimism reminded her too much of it. Hope it's your favorite ending. I feel like I'm heading to a bad ending. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I, I don't feel confident in the choices I've made. I don't think it's a good ending. <laughs> I'm sure she is only worried for me. I seem to inspire that breed of pity in others. I can understand that. I'm afraid I often come off as quite helpless. Arson? No! Why would you bring arson up out of nowhere? Hi, Brindley! There's literally no fire here. Stop! <laughs> Welcome on in. Happy Women Wednesday. Welcome to Without a Voice. I played this a million years ago, but I haven't played it in so long. I'm, I'm having so much fun revisiting it. Welcome, welcome. Hmm. I must ask her about her own life. We know so little about each other. It's no wonder she would react that way. It's understandable, yeah. One can only draw conclusions based on what one already knows. Presently, there was a knock at the door. Given how long it had been since her last shipment, as well as the fact that Elowen was far more likely to announce her presence with her words, Cassidy could draw but one conclusion. She waited nearly ten minutes before opening the door. It was protocol. She knew not who her brother sent, and it was unclear whether they knew whom they were delivering to. The royal family of Veramir had a distinctive look to them. It would not do for too many people to know who she was, or that a former princess dwelled here. Shipment! Deliveries here! When she finally allowed herself to open the door, she found a large wooden crate not unlike the previous ones. Sitting atop the crate's contents was a, a sealed envelope. Cassidy and an the, the, the Cassidy instantly recognized the severe cursive. Letter from Alexander. Here we go. To my sister. I'm glad to hear that you are adjusting well to life at the cottage. Doubtless there are many things that challenge you, given your former life, but we must all make the best of things. I know that you have too much time on your hands, so I've been sure to enclose more books for you to read. Success. You may one day be called upon to marry well for the... Uh, to, to marry well for the advantage of king and country. As such, it is of the utmost importance that you keep your mind sharp and your hands unidle. That's not cursive. Well, it's, it's probably not cursive so that I can actually read it. I appreciate the game making it legible. <laughs> this is just my, uh, my interpretation of the letter, don't worry. The last part seemed to have been written later, as the script looked slightly different. I think of you often. I worry about you more often still. Be safe in the forest and keep to yourself, though I know that is difficult for you. Hmm. Please await my next letter. I remain your loyal brother. A. Ah. She read over the letter many times, trying her best to glean affection from it. 
Alexander has always been a little awkward. Hmm. I'm sure the last bit was added with some reluctance, after one of his advisors chastised him for the content of his letter. She smiled and ran her fingertips along the part that read, I think of you often. But then she remembered the sentence about marriage. I don't want to marry. <laughs> the how thoughtful is fully just like the, the fully full brainwash. Oh, it's all for the best. Yes, that's so thoughtful considering me marrying. It's so suspicious as well, though, when you think about it. Like, she's been hidden away here. It's like nobody can know she's living here. Nobody can know she's, like, been exiled and and all this stuff. And then suddenly it's like, well, you might have to marry for the good of the... for the good of the realm, like... And then reveal herself? Like, what? Hello? Huh? There's so many, so many holes. There's so many gaps. And she just does not seem to realize... I don't want to marry. I've never considered marriage, even before my exile. Can a noble or royal from another nation be content with a wife who has been living in the woods? Can I even be content myself in such a marriage? The letter did not raise her spirits as much as letters from Alexander usually did. The implication of it weighed on her. Of course I must be useful to the kingdom somehow. Why else would I be alive if, if I can be of use even as a disgraced princess? Cassidy sighed. She would not, could not finish that thought. All of a sudden, Cassidy wanted nothing but to see Elowen again. I will seek her out. I must. Yes, you must. The other woman's presence would certainly be a salve for her current mood. That was her reasoning, and she swiftly acted upon it. Cassidy sent, set the crate away inside the cottage, and then set out. Come on, find woman. When everything's going bad, beautiful woman. <laughs> she can help, right? After a long, fruitless walk about the forest, she arrived in front of the wisteria tree. Elowen. There she is. Princess? I am no longer a princess. Just because you no longer live in a castle does not mean that you are no longer a princess. Cassidy was reminded of the word marriage once again. Elowen was right. She was still considered a princess, insofar as a princess could be useful. A long silence passed between them. Both were conscious, no doubt, of the argument that had transpired between them. An argument they had not yet resolved. I am sorry. Elowen's wide, wide eyes, wide, 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 wide. Uh, Elowen's eyes widened almost imperceptibly, but Cassidy, staring into the other woman's face as she was, took note. I should not have burdened you with my circumstances to begin with, but you were only worried for me. I should have been more sensitive in my explanation. Oh, bless her. No. Hmm. Cassidy was struck by the sight of Elowen's soft smile as she laughed. The former princess's heart fluttered, and her brother's letter was promptly forgotten. <laughs> it is nothing. It would seem that I, too, am quite the fool. I guess you're both just fools then, right? The air thusly cleared. The two women were able to enjoy the rest of their day together. They whiled the time away in companionable satisfaction. Well, that went okay. That went well, right? That night, Cassidy drifted off to sleep with a full heart. The strings of love are oft unseen. Though wrapped around you, they may be. When tied fast, none can come between, nor challenge humble fate's decree. Mm. Day five. <sighs> How 
beautiful it is today. Isn't it? It's lovely. Indeed. Eloine had surprised Cassidy earlier that morning, arriving at her front door without warning. Though Eloine didn't even knock, silly creature. <laughs> I wonder if she would have left if I hadn't seen her and opened the door. The thought bothered her, almost as much as the notion that Eloine might not yearn for Cassidy's company the way Cassidy did for hers. After some time spent lingering, both paralyzed by indecision, they decided to go on a leisurely nature walk. For the next few hours, they strolled through the forest together, stopping here and there to pick berries or mushrooms. That one is poisonous. Do not touch it. Oh. R right Cassidy drew her hand back in mortified alarm. It would not do for your lovely skin to be marred by poisonous spores. Cassidy hazarded a guess at the other woman's face, but Eloin looked as unflappable as ever. Poisonous? Ooh. Do we try and find out more? Do we try and pry? I... Yeah, I want to say, how do you know so much? Because saying, like, are you sure is kind of like... not believing her. And I... I do believe her. Let's... let's say... You know so much about the flora and fauna here. How ever did you learn it all? How do you know so much? I have lived here many years. In that time, I have witnessed many interesting things. Ah. I have learned much, letting the people who pass through educate me. However, oh. hmm? it's been a solitary life. I have seen much, but experienced a little oh when they're both lonely i have long felt like someone on the outside looking in on a world i could never touch <sighs> there was a melancholy in eloine's countenance that cassidy had not yet seen not even thought the woman capable of the eloine she knew was dignified taking such charge of her emotions that none ever showed. I have not known her long, of course. Perhaps that was merely how she comports herself around those of little acquaintance. What made you decide to reach out to me? You're beautiful. I mean, what? Reach out? Uh, uh, that is... She thought back to their first meeting, the way her own heart had leapt at the sight of Eloin. And Eloin had known all about her, had apparently been watching her for some time. You didn't have to be sitting under the tree that day. You could have continued watching me from afar. Uh -huh. But you found me. You spoke to me. Yeah. And I'm so glad she did. But I fear she might call me silly if I say such a thing. I thought you delicately beautiful. The matter-of-fact way that Eloin said this struck Cassidy. She was flattered, of course, yet part of her was also worried. Beauty, not, beauty was not something lasting. It would be a shaky foundation for any relationship. If it had been a courtier complimenting her beauty, Cassidy might have taken it better. But this was Eloin. A woman of whom she was becoming increasingly fond. Ah. Thought? <laughs> That's past tense, is it not? What do you think of me now? Oh. <laughs> Neo, hello! Welcome, welcome! Nyahoy, welcome! Happy Women Wednesday! Welcome to Without a Voice. Um, I think things are okay. Things probably aren't okay, but I like to pretend they are. Sorry, I dropped something. <laughs> but welcome, welcome. I'm still on my first playthrough. For the, pl the first playthrough of this, I'm just picking the options that I'm, I'm feeling a connection with. I'm just being like, I want to pick this one. 
And then I'm going to try and get all of the endings. But uh, I have no idea how it's going to go. It's probably going to be a bad end to start. I've, I've got a feeling. Got a, got a feeling. Got a hunch. I could be wrong. It could go fine. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But uh, welcome on in. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having a good Wednesday. Ah, Cassidy asking the real questions now. I still think you exceedingly beautiful. But dainty and... <laughs> delicate you are not yeah that's that's extremely fair you are far from being the poised <laughs> princess i took you for cassidy winced and her mouth formed a little pout as she turned her eyes to the ground see i think that's a compliment cassidy's not going to think of it that way but i feel like that's a compliment as i thought it is to be expected someone so graceful as elowen would of course find me lacking you are not what I expected, but I believe that might be for the better. Yeah, see, it's a compliment. It's a good thing. It's like you're not just like a, a vapid, shallow princess. You're so much more than that. Slowly, Cassidy tilted her face up, her eyes growing large with disbelief. For the better? Mm -hmm. You are always exceeding my expectations. I wonder... If the other people I allowed to come and go would have as well, had I let them so near. Mm. Well! Well. This Wednesday was busy. Got more work despite the donuts you handed out today. Wait, you handed out donuts and they gave you more work? That feels unfair. <laughs> oh, I hope the, the work goes well, though, at least. Hopefully it's, it's not too stressful. Hmm? I hope the donuts were good as well. It may be selfish of me, but I... I'm truly happy you let the others go. Uh, I'm glad that I'm the only person you allowed close. Oh my. I'm sorry, that makes me sound so... So ugly. You're not ugly. Not ugly. I'd expect something for you to hand out on your birthday. Wait, is it your birthday? Is it your birthday today? Wait. Is it your birthday? Oh, you should have said something sooner. Oh my goodness, happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy shell day. Oh my goodness, hold on. Oh, you should have mentioned. Should have said something sooner. It's time for the, the birthday treat. Everyone gets one. <laughs> Everyone gets one, you're not escaping. A much better birthday after the work is done <laughs> but happy birthday thank you for for telling me i i like playing happy birthday to people on their birthday it's it's the little birthday treat on on your birthday you get a free automaton serenade if you tell me <laughs> uh that goes for like even if i'm not streaming on someone's birthday like if you tell me it was your birthday the day before when i wasn't streaming or something you'll still get a, a birthday serenade you can still have one <laughs> I like the excuses. Excuses to play the automaton. It's always fun. <laughs> that was amazing. I'm glad you think so. I do love the automaton. It's such a silly instrument. It's so fun. Also, everyone's favorite nerd. Hello. Welcome, welcome. I'm glad. I'm glad you, you like the automaton serenade. Thinking of getting one yourself. Oh, they are so fun. Like, I, I will warn, if you're trying to, like, actually play good music with an automaton, it is exceedingly difficult. It is very, very difficult to actually play the notes you want to play. Even with practice, even when you know, like, the theory of how to play it, it'll still come out with just, like, random sounds every now and then. But that's, like, the joy of it. That is the... That is the beauty of the automaton. Like... Th I feel like part of the joy of it is like playing a song and then just getting the complete wrong note and giggling. <laughs> but it's so good. I love them. I love the automaton. It's a very good instrument. Oh, and I also have a kazoo now as well. 
I haven't used the kazoo very often because um, it's very loud, but uh, I got my Outer Wilds uh, collector's edition thing and it came with a kazoo. So I actually have a kazoo as well. Wait, should I get my kazoo? I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. I'm getting my little Outer Wilds kit out. Property of Outer Wilds Ventures. Let me get my kazoo. Cause like, I, I don't, I've never really like practiced playing the kazoo before. This is like the first time I've owned a kazoo that wasn't like when I was five years old, a tiny, a tiny one from like party bags, going to like birthday parties and getting like a little plastic kazoo in there. This is a proper metal one and let me see if I know how to play. I think I'll move away from the mic because it's loud. But uh, let's see. Oh, miss the recorder playing. Oh, the recorder playing will return. I just, I don't know where I've put my recorder at the moment. I know it's somewhere in my room. I'm just not sure where. Yeah, I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm going to try play play the kazoo. I need practice to like actually make the notes happen. I, I don't know like what I should be doing to, to play it, but <laughs> but I will practice. I will get more practice. I will become a master of playing the kazoo. <laughs> hey, let me, let me sit up again. Anyway, <laughs> little kazoo interlude. I hope everyone enjoyed that. A kazoo interlude before um, we continue the Everything is fine, everything is okay. Video game. But here, she's saying it makes her sound ugly. I think it makes her sound like she knows what she wants and that's not a bad thing. It is okay. It is okay to want things every now and then. It's, it's not selfish to have desires. No. No uglier than I. Mm. Suddenly, in Cassidy's eyes, Elowen looked so very haggard. Oh. She... She peered through the polished veneer and saw a woman who was tired and hungry. Oh. Are you alright? In a blink, Elowen appeared to be the same as always. Hello? I am fine. Are you sure? <laughs> she didn't look fine. Even so, Cassidy could not shake the feeling that something was off. Are you quite sure? You seem tired. Elowen was silent for a long while. Yes. Perhaps. Perhaps I am tired. Yeah. Forgive me. I am not used to the midday sun. It occurred to Cassidy that she... Uh, it occurred to Cassidy then that she had never seen Elowen in the morning before. Ooh. Could she be something of a night owl? I hadn't supposed it. And here I invited her to walk with me underneath the full blaze of the sun. How thoughtless I am. Elowen. Mm, Cassidy. Also, Cat Cat Cat, hello! Tired? Have you tried a can of monster energy to lift your weary body and spirit? Hashtag not sponsored, hashtag monster, please sponsor me. I'm gonna have some. <laughs> have a sippy of my monster. But uh, welcome, welcome! I hope you're doing well. Happy Wednesday. <laughs> Surely she's not a vampire, right? Right? I'm sure she's fine. I'm, I'm sure she's just tired. And everything is normal. <laughs> Had a can earlier? Oh, heck yes. I've, I've got a can with me now. I've got a, a can of the Monster Energy Ultra Peachy Keen, 
which basically just tastes like eating a peach. It's amazing. I love this one. This one is definitely one of my favorites. I, it's so nice. It's so nice. And that is my monster for the day. But I hope your, your Wednesday is going well. <laughs> Buen, buenas dias. Good, good meowning. <laughs> good in the afternoon. How can we do evening? Hold on. I can't think of a cat pun for good evening. Oh well, that's that's fine. Just wait until night, night time. Eve, evening. It's it's a little bit of a stretch, but it kind of works. <laughs> You're quite partial to Aussie lemonade. Oh, I tried that for the first time at my birthday on my birthday stream. Um, I I like the Aussie lemonade as well, but I I feel like it's a bit too too strong tasting for me as weird as that sounds like I love the taste of it but I have to drink it really slowly like I, I can't just like down a can like I can with the peach ones <laughs> like it's it's the type that I take lots of little sips with but I really really liked that the Aussie lemonade is really nice but yeah it's it's hard to make evening like cat pun it's easy like with to just change any end to, like a nya but sometimes it doesn't work because it's it's like an ing sound, so even yang, it 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 becomes a new word. Because <laughs> like good night works a bit better because it's got the i sound in night. You could always just say like have a, have a, a meowvelous evening. <laughs> just extend it, extend the greeting a bit. Dinya time! <laughs> Dinya. That that just makes me think of like a uh, did you or Dinya? Dinya do it? <laughs> I don't get dinner from that. It is very acidic, but that makes it so good for you. Ah Yeah, it makes sense. I, I tend to go for the sweet ones. I've I've got such a sweet tooth. I love the sweetness. The sweeter the better for me. I'm I'm a big fan of sweetness. Anyway, uh I'm sure Eloin is completely fine right now, so, uh... <laughs> yes? Hi. Why don't you stay with me at my cottage tonight? Oh my. What? Well, I am worried about you. And it can't be easy, being a woman and living alone. Oh my goodness. She knew this best of all. I would be much more at ease if you would come with me tonight. We're in there. Come on. <laughs> Let us break bread together and oh. while away the night in comfort. Cassidy really is so forward. I I think she doesn't even mean to be. She just has an idea and just goes with it. Without thinking of like the, the further consequences. But I'm fine with that. She was not expecting Eloin to accept. Not Eloin who had reacted so strongly to an invitation merely a few days earlier. And yet... All right. Okay. <gasps> really? Would it be better if I returned to my home? No. N no I was just worried that you would not accept. I realize that's not very... <laughs> dainty. To be so forward. Cassidy, she literally just said that she prefers that you're not dainty. She literally said that in explicit words. <laughs> Cassidy, please. At this, Eloin finally smiled. Cassidy's heart felt akin to an acrobat at the sight, doing backflips and pirouettes in joy. It would be my honor to accompany you. Oh, the, the Eloin smile is so, so precious. So precious. Look at that. It may do us both some good. Mm, she's blushing. They're both blushing. As ever, Cassidy was far too excited to hear the latter. Looking forward to a night with her new favorite person, she had already changed course and started along the path home. He. Everyone's smile is. Yeah, just please protect these smiles. I. I 
I love the blushes. Cassidy closed the front door behind them and went to the kitchen to put away the plants they'd gathered. Is there anything I can help with? Oh, leave it to me. Just have a seat and rest. You really do look tired. All right. While she put her affairs in order in the kitchen, Cassidy couldn't help but think back to the things Elowen had said. She said that she likes me the way that I am. That's so kind. She felt a deep sense of warmth and satisfaction, the likes of which she had not felt in a long time. Cassidy returned to the living room a short while later, two cups of tea in her hand. Oh! She found Elowen asleep, slumped on the divan. Poor thing, she must have been exhausted. There was a loose strand of hair in front of Elowen's face. Cassidy reached down and tucked it behind her ear. She looks so innocent when she's asleep. Chuckling to herself, Cassidy let Elowen rest and passed some quiet time reading by the other woman's side. Night soon fell, and the pair supped together. Sup. <laughs> Nothing much, what's up with you? She still isn't eating anything. She had plenty of tea earlier, but... Could it be that she's foreign? Perhaps she's too polite to say that it's not to her taste. Elowen, unaware of being observed so directly, delicately sipped a glass of water. Are you full? I am... satisfied. Hmm. Hmm. How can you be when you didn't eat anything? I simply am not hungry at this very moment. Hum. Hum. I see. Her tone left no room for argument. After dinner, Cassidy cleared the plates and things away and began to get the room ready for sleep. The cottage was not large. Her parlor had to double as her bedroom out of necessity. It was all well and good for a single person, but now that another had been added, Cassidy became acutely aware of the lack of space. Oh my. There's only one bed. This is one of my favorite tropes, honestly. <laughs> this is one of my favorite tropes. I'm, I'm a sucker for it every time. <laughs> I do not mind sleeping on the divan. I already did earlier. Just that's true, but what kind of a hostess would she be if she let you sleep not in the bed? Once again, I'm sorry that I didn't wake you up. Oh. You just looked so at peace. I could not bear to wake you. I'm embarrassed to have allowed you to see me in such a state. I only fear... Oh. Hmm? Hmm? No, it is nothing. I will gladly sleep on the divan or the ground. I am not choosy. Well, how about the bed? Cassidy's not gonna let you sleep on the floor. Could always hang some duvets from the beams, impromptu hammock. Oh, I feel like that would be so tentatively dangerous. That would, I, I feel like it would be so hard to secure that in a way that I wouldn't be terrified of just falling in the middle of the night. But it would be lovely. It would be so nice, though. Oh, that won't do at all. You're a guest. Mm -hmm. If anything, I shall sleep on the floor. Oh. <laughs> Play the gacha while you sleep. Yeah, it's just, you gotta hope that your, your luck's high enough for it to not fall. Oh, you could you could even be like, um, if it doesn't fall all night, that's like an ultra rare. If it falls, but only like in the morning, then that's like an S SR. 
If you get in it and it falls immediately, you just got a common. <laughs> Cassidy gulped. Truth be told, she had one other, much more preferable arrangement in mind. You cheeky little minx. I love it. We could share the bed. There's room enough for two. Yeah? I notice you do not offer to sleep on the divan. Uh. <laughs> Struck by her own lack of graciousness, Cassidy bit her lip, cowed into silence. <laughs> She's so distracted by like, okay, but um, what if what if you join me? What? If... <laughs> she didn't even really consider the other options. I think as soon as she thought of that, as soon as that idea was in her head, that was like the only thing left. And honestly, I appreciate that. Good for her. She knows what she wants. Ah, uh, you'd play gatchas to win. You would win a fracture. And technically, it makes one bone into two, so you'd be getting more bones. <laughs> no, a fracture would just, like, damage the bone. You'd have to break it to, to get more bones. But then it's like, I don't know. You wouldn't get two bones. You'd just get two half bones. <laughs> Cassidy just sitting on the bed, like, patting her lap, just like, I am the bed. I'm the pillow. It's okay. I am only teasing. I love the way she teases in such a deadpan manner. <laughs> if you do not mind being so snug, I will be happy to share the space with yes. you. Yes! Snuggly! Oh, nothing will please me more than to be close to you. That's kind of gay, Cassidy. <laughs> It's a little bit gay. I mean... <laughs> yes! Wonderful! I shall fetch another pillow then. She flew out of the room to retrieve a spare pillow from the closet, face burning with embarrassment. <gasps> oh my goodness! Do you have enough space? You're not too cramped. This is so pretty. Oh my goodness. The, the last time I played this game, I played this game like years and years and years ago before it was even on steam uh when it first came out and like the cgs have been updated so beautifully this is so pretty this is so lovely oh, this is, oh. the bed and the pillow yeah i am fine oh i love this truth be told I do not mind the proximity. I love this. There was a faraway look in Eloin's eyes. You're all for this, but also that is a small bed. This is like the same size as my bed. <laughs> I would say my bed is about this size. So this is just like a normal bed to me. I guess like a lot of people do tend to have like double beds and larger beds. But uh, because I live in like a fairly smallish house with uh, two other grown adults. Uh, my bedroom, if I put a double bed in my bedroom, I wouldn't fit anything else in here. There would be nothing else. So I only have a single bed. But the single bed's all I need. Like, it's only ever a problem when Tiffany decides to sleep in the middle of it. Because once there's a cat in the middle of the bed, there's, there's no space. <laughs> but no, this is like a normal bed size to me. But oh, yeah, having to get up in the middle of the night, it... I think it would be, it wouldn't be too hard. You could just like crawl to the end, maybe? Like very carefully. I've, I've gotten used to like maneuvering my bed because of Tiffany just sleeping wherever she wants to because she is a cat and she does that. So I'm pretty good at like untangling myself. Like I crawl along the side of my bed closest to the wall and then like step off the back <laughs> so that I don't disturb her. Yeah, uh, you sleep in, you think, a twin. I th I don't... I, is there a difference between, like, single and twin? Hold on. Single bed, twin bed sizes. Ba -ba -ba -ba. I think a twin is slightly longer, maybe. 
I don't know. I think single and twin are generally pretty interchangeable. It's basically the same thing. It's interesting, yeah, because I, I have a single bed, which is like... 90 centimeters by 190 centimeters. But yeah, I think different places also have like different terms for, for beds. Because I think twin, like the term twin comes from like hotel rooms. Like you get either like a, a, a room with a double bed or a room with twin beds. And then it's like there's the two singles. I think that's the origin. I could just be making things up. Twin bed size. Oh no, apparently a twin is smaller. Unless that's just what it's like in the UK. No, I think it is about the same size. What's it, what is the difference between a British and an American mattress? I've just found a whole little little article now on mattresses. <laughs> How have I ended up here? Because, yeah, all sizes are different depending on the area. Yeah, twin in the US is basically the same as a UK single. Except apparently the US ones are slightly wider. By like... By like two inches. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, um, twin and single are the same size. But it's called a single in the UK, it's called twin in the US, and the twin is <laughs> two inches wider. <laughs> That's so interesting. I didn't know this. Imperial mattresses? Well, it's it's got like um, sizing in inches on the, the website I've currently got, but the first one I looked at had it in centimeters, <laughs> so... Oh, this is really interesting. Apparently, um, what we call a king-size bed in the UK, that's actually a queen-size bed in the US. <laughs> so, um, a king in the UK is a queen in the US, and then we don't have, like, a king-size bed in the UK. But then there's, there's a California king as a size, apparently, which is, like, the biggest bed you can get. And then in the UK, there's a super king, which is... Um, smaller than that. <laughs> oh, but that's interesting too. In the US, apparently it's called a full bed, but in the UK, it's a double. Interesting, interesting. I'm learning so much about mattresses. Even after, like, getting my new mattress. <laughs> right, anyway, I digress. Um, mattress distractions. <laughs> uh, BRB walking home. I hope you have a good walk. Uh, you've had this mattress for way too long. That was me with my old mattress. I had had my mattress for so long, it was literally broken. So having my new mattress has made such a difference. It's so nice. It's so nice. Like, I actually lie on it and I don't immediately sink into holes. It's incredible. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't know the, the different names for, like, mattress sizes. That's so interesting. So a US twin is a UK single, a US full is a UK double, a US queen is a UK king, and a US king is bigger than a UK king. <laughs> and then in the UK we have a super king, and that's still smaller than a king size bed, apparently. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah, a super king is still smaller than a US king. That is wild. Yeah, I think US beds are just bigger in general. But I guess it makes sense as well because the US in general is also bigger. So the houses are more likely to be bigger because there's more space. Whereas in the UK, um, houses do tend to be a lot smaller. The rooms tend to be smaller. So it's it, it makes sense. So there's nothing between double and king for us. No, there isn't. It's, it's double then king. Um, I think sometimes... I need to double check. I might be making things up. 
But uh, I think sometimes a double can be called a queen. No, a queen is um, like a small double. It's not quite as big as a double bed. It's like between a single and a double. That's that's a, a queen size for us. But they're not as common, I don't think. I don't tend to see many queen size beds. It's usually just single, then double, then king. But king is like the biggest size we have and it's still smaller than a, a US king. <laughs> No, like, uh, it's it's small. Uh, our super king is smaller than a US king. What the US calls um, queen-sized is our king-sized beds. <laughs> so wild. I did not know all of this. It's interesting. It's... But I, I think it probably is more about, like, space and, like, land distribution. Like, when you think of the US, the US is massive. The UK, comparatively, is so small. And so the houses tend to also be smaller because there's more people and less space to put them. Anyway, uh, that's enough about mattresses. <laughs> I got distracted talking about mattresses, but actually the ulterior motive was just so we can look at the CG for longer. <laughs> that's why I did it. My cunning plan. There was a faraway look in Elowen's eyes. I'd been alone for so long. Until you came. How did you come to live here in the forest? Where is your family? Hmm. Why the hesitation? Or perhaps she cannot say. I'm gonna say perhaps she cannot say. Have a little bit of thought. Perhaps it's not that she does not wish to tell me, but that she cannot. She may have some circumstances that prevent her from speaking on the subject. Was it impertinent of me to bring it up? I'm sorry. Is it... difficult for you to tell me? It is a trying subject. I'm not quite sure where to begin. Goodness. The Elowen backstory, what is her deal? Also, I just realized I didn't actually say hi to you as well. Hi, now. Welcome, welcome. Joining for the, the mattress talks. <laughs> Hello. She took a deep breath. I have lived here all my life. Once I was not alone, but... Elowen paused and sighed. You remember the wisteria tree? Mm -hmm. Of course. That's my favorite place in the entire forest. Have you noticed that there are no other wisteria trees around it? Oh. Now that you mention it... She never had thought about it, but as Cassidy searched her memories, she realized that Elowen was correct. You're right. I wonder why that is. There is an even older wisteria tree deep in the forest. But now those are the only two left, and they are so far from each other. That's so sad. It's a sad story. So it is with me. Mm. Cassidy found her choice of words puzzling, but nodded. I once had siblings. Mm. They have long since departed, so I don't really have family here anymore. Uh. Others have come and gone, as I said, but I could not relate to them. But you? I watched them from afar without entering their lives, and did not mourn them when they left mine. And so, the years went by. He'll never be alone again. Oh, wow. Elowen's eyes widened. Cassidy thought she might start crying, but she only smiled sadly. I see. Mm -hmm. Cassidy snuggled just a little bit closer to the, to the other woman, as if to show meaning through actions where words might fail. And so they passed the night together, in pleasant company and warm conversation. When the sunshine blazes down, 
I soon begin to wish for rain. But when you've gone away, my dear, I soon long for the sun again. Oh, wow. Gigi, hello, welcome. Happy Women Wednesday. I got women. We got women here. Welcome on in. Happy Wednesday. I hope you're doing well. You're here just in time for day six. Cassidy awoke alone, with a cold space beside her. I hope she's all right. Still, what a wonderful night that was. Each precious memory had been carved into Cassidy's heart. She yawned and slowly pulled herself out of bed. With or without Eloan, she would have to get on with her day. <laughs> favorite day, favorite day of the week, Women Wednesday. Did I get the physical without a voice? Of course I did. <laughs> of course I did. I, I was one of the, the first backers, I think. But yes, there is a short story. There's a beautiful short story. I still haven't actually looked at it. I wanted to replay the game before I look at all like the bonus stuff and the goodies. But yes, I, I, I do have it. I also have the most beautiful standee as well. And the keychain and the, the pin, the pin which I'm wearing right now on my jacket down here. <laughs> I love it. Cassidy hummed a little tune to herself as she cleaned up and prepared breakfast. Sitting down at the table with her bread and morning tea, she glanced at her stationery set, left by the vase. A lot has happened. Perhaps I should write Alexander a letter? I mean, what if we just don't? What if we don't? I think we don't bother. She shook her head. That can wait. I'm more worried about what Elowen is up to now. Though always lonesome before, the former princess's life now felt so much emptier without Elowen's presence. Though she should be accustomed to such solitude, and <laughs> should, I'll have to mention that afterwards, she could barely concentrate on her usual chores. <laughs> to think that a few days could change a person so! In a lull in her activities, Cassidy's gaze went to the window. Deep in the forest, her beloved wisteria tree stood. She could see it so clearly in her mind's eye. I wonder if she's there. Eloin is like that tree. She said it herself, didn't she? Eloin is, is like that tree. Eloin is very much like that tree. She said as much herself. So beautiful and haunting and alone. The other woman's words from the night before weighed heavily on Cassidy. She passed the rest of the day peacefully, but with a sense of unease. The next day came, and still no Eloan. Cassidy was left with nothing but her own thoughts. And thinking of Eloan perturbed Cassidy greatly. In the last several days, the woman had embedded herself into Cassidy's life like a thorn. I never expected to become close to another person again. Mm. She thought about Eloan and the things the other woman had said. The hours spent together that were so few, but felt an impossible eternity. I never did ask her about her feet. Why are her toes always curled? What a line, though. Just, I never did ask her about her feet. <laughs> Despite how she looks, she must be much older than me. She has a proper way of speaking, and always says she's lived in the forest a long time. Mm -hmm. His shoe's too small. No, Eloin's shoes are like open-toe sandals. <laughs> 
and with the intricacy of her clothing and her manners. Mm -hmm. Something did not quite add up. Elowen did not seem to like people much. Certainly, it did not seem her presence in the wood, despite how long it had been, was known to many. Alexander most probably would not have sent me here if it was known that a beautiful woman was living alone in this very wood. Where did Elowen come from? Why was she alone? She still had no satisfactory answer. And oddest of all... I still have never seen her eat. Mm. Thinking it all over... Thinking it all over... Helen is... I don't know which one I want to pick. I... Let's go with Strange to start with. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Akira. Hello. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Happy Women Wednesday. I'm going to go with Strange to start with. Helen is strange. She is rather strange. Then again, there is nothing normal about my situation either. Thank you for the head pat too. This only means that I have more things to discover about her in the future. Cassidy shook her head. Even if Elowen was a tad strange, Cassidy knew that there was more to her than that. Wasn't that? She is capable of joking, mm -hmm. though she does not do it often. Her smile is so precious. It is. She can be... blunt, perhaps, but I believe she yes. means well. Yes, me too. I... Mm. I care deeply for her. And she... She... So many options, so many options. Elowen cares for me. I'm going for it. I'm going for it. Presently, there was a knock at the door, startling Cassidy out of her deep thoughts. It was a short knock, a signal for a letter not accompanying a box. A letter? So soon after the last? The letter brought another thought to Cassidy. If I leave here, if one day Alexander allows me to leave, what else awaits me? Is a political marriage truly my only means of escape? If I can be useful to the kingdom in any way, is that better? Will my life no longer be considered a waste? Your life is not a waste, Cassidy. Don't say that. Don't say that. Your life is not a waste. Alexander. <laughs> Did you ever truly love me? Is the precious younger brother that I once knew completely gone? Are you truly the one who has been writing me these letters? One negative thought spiraled into a dozen. She let out a long sigh. Her thoughts had taken her on a not-so-merry chase. <laughs> cat, cat, cat. That is quite possibly one of the worst ideas, because Cassidy is exiled here because she was um, uh, convicted of treason and there was a vote of no confidence for her to be the next monarch. So if she assassinated her brother she would probably get executed. They they wouldn't then just be like, oh, actually, we changed our mind. You can be queen now. <laughs> Although it would be hilarious if that did work. <laughs> All the more reason to clean house now, right? I mean, what? I mean, um, don't um, plot against monarchy. It's, it's bad. Just um, it's, don't, don't say it out loud. I mean, what? <laughs> Welcome back, Shell. Welcome back. Don't worry. There's no there's no treason being plotted here. There's no plans of regicide happening. Don't worry. It's fine. Welcome back. 
Her thoughts had taken her on a not-so-merry chase. <sighs> if I dwell on these thoughts, there will be no end to them. Mm. She brewed herself a cup of tea to calm her nerves and began reading a new book. From time to time, her eyes went somewhat nervously to the window. And so, evening fell. Treason for whatever reason. <laughs> I love the rhyme. <laughs> and so, evening fell. Oh! Oh? Cassidy awoke suddenly from an impromptu nap. She frowned at the book in her lap, still open to the boring page she had left off on. I can hardly recall what the book is about. How unlike me. Yeah, you're so distracted, aren't you? Yet she knew the reason. She was still distracted by thoughts of Elowen. It's evening now. I wonder. If I go into the forest now, might I... The front door suddenly burst open. Please, pardon my intrusion. There is... Hello? An army is approaching. I do not like the look of them, and I fear for your safety. Oh no, they heard us. <laughs> oh no. Oh no, we should... She doesn't look good. She does not look very good, huh? Do you think the army heard us plotting treason and that's why this is happening? <laughs> she does not look okay, oh my goodness. Uh. Despite her strange appearance, Cassidy knew it was Elowen immediately. Those piercing golden eyes, that long hair. She was alarmed, yes, confused. But the concern that was clear on Elowen's face overtook any other questions she might have. She looks... different, but that is her. Those eyes, there must be some real danger. Surely there is some reason for the way she looks. I'm certain she'll tell me, but for now... All right. <gasps> what shall we do? Okay. We... Oui. Yes. Yes. You are with me. Are you not? Yes. You believe what I say? Well, yes. I do. I trust you wholeheartedly. Do you? Elowen's breath seemed to hitch, most probably from the fear she felt. That nervousness permeated her entire being. Cassidy noticed this, and having noticed, there was no way that Cassidy could fear Elowen, no matter how she appeared. Do you love me? It was not the response Cassidy expected. But deep down, she knew that this was no time to hesitate to demure. Cassidy looked Elowen straight in the eye. Yes, I love you. It was important that Elowen knew that. That she knows that. I see. <gasps> Hi. She's okay. And so the frog has turned back into a dashing prince? The power of true love? Cassidy smiled warmly. Now will you finally tell me what is going on? Oh, the army. Mm. No. Not that. About you. Yes. You... You deserve an explanation. Yeah. I was, until but a few days ago, a wisteria tree. The same one you often visited. And there it is. Honestly, I'm... It's, it's so interesting. Like, obviously I'm playing this. I've played it before so I knew this, but I'm wondering to myself, like, what point in the plot would I have guessed this? And I think I would have guessed it before this point. 
Like, if I was playing this completely blind and I didn't know the plot and I was, like, theorizing as I went, I think I would have guessed around the time of, like, when Elowen was saying she's like the tree. I, I think, like, knowing the way I think, I would have been like, maybe she is the tree. Maybe she is a tree. And I would have been right. <laughs> I have lived in this forest for hundreds of years. Mostly alone. At some point, I developed a spirit. I was able to observe the beings that passed through my life. Wow. Many humans came and went. I was lonely, but I was all right with the way things were. I was a tree. They were not. I was not to interfere in their lives. Yeah, I must be lonely. I don't think I'd want to be a tree. What? What changed? I wonder what changed. Can't be anything to do with the girl who kept sitting under the tree talking every single day, right? So she's a dryad? I guess so. Like, what? what is, like, the... Like, the, the lore and stuff behind dryads? Because I, I know, like, dryads are, like, tree spirits. Yeah, it's like a tree spirit or a tree nymph in Greek mythology. Yeah, so I, I guess she is. That's, that's the, the best term for it. Oh, I need to stop looking at mythology stuff on Wikipedia. I'm going to be here all day. Let me let me get out of there. Let me stop before I even start. <laughs> but yes, she is. She is a tree. What changed? He. <laughs> oh, the, the smile and the blush on her face. Oh. You and your silly ranting, your singing, <laughs> your awkward couplets. <laughs> That sad look you got in your eyes as you gazed at the horizon. I was smitten. I love this. I love this. I can't believe I didn't get, like, one of the worst endings first try. <laughs> Part of me was kind of expecting to, but I... <sighs> yeah, that's the rabbit hole when I was staring at its abyss. I was. It's, it's so bad. Like, if I start researching a topic... And then I start clicking on links and I get further down. I'm just gone. I'm just fully gone. I get distracted so easily, as everyone already knows by the fact that I was talking about mattress sizes earlier. <laughs> as soon as I start looking into things, I'm always just like, well, now I want to know more. Well, now I want to know more. I'm going to keep looking into this. And that's when it gets dangerous. <laughs> anyway. Even after you realized that I wasn't so dainty as you believed, Especially after that. Yes. Perhaps I came to love you even more for all your flaws. Though I do not see them as such. I had to speak with you. I had to become human and be with you. I was consumed by that wish. And then one night, a little voice whispered to me. Will you strike a bargain with me? If you fulfill the conditions, you can become human. Well, that sounds a little suspicious. That's a little worrying. Who was it that whispered to you? I'm not sure. A god, perhaps? Or a demon? Gonna hope god. Or a fairy? I know the Fae like their tricks. Ooh. <laughs> when you talk to a tree and don't leave her, that's our boy. <laughs> it mattered not. I took the bargain. I was given seven days. In seven days, if you fell in love with me, oh. I would become like you. seven days but in that time oh. I was neither tree nor human in between I was not Struggling. given human emotions my human like mm. legs caused me great pain with each step it felt as if I was treading upon knife points that's why her feet uh, her toes were always curled over 
because of the pain. I also love, like, the the thought of, like, the tree, like... Let me... Hold on, let me have a sip of my monster before I try and actually word something. Let me try and put these words in an order that actually makes a sentence. Hold on. <laughs> it's like, I love the fact that her toes curling over kind of feels like roots almost as well. Like, the toes trying to get back into the ground. Like, curling down like the roots trying to get back into the earth. Ah. <sighs> so that explains yeah. it. Explains what? I was thinking about your feet. <laughs> Cassidy felt a strange comfort in laying to rest the mystery of Elowen's odd stance, though she was sorry to know that the other woman had suffered so. And every morning I needed to take in the purest of sunlight to survive. Ah, that's why I never saw you in the morning. Yes. And that's why she was so tired when they went for the walk, because she hadn't had the time to, to get enough sunlight. I see. Cassidy was tempted to ask Elowen more, especially about the other side of the bargain. What would have happened had Elowen failed? But there was something in the way Elowen skirted that topic that told Cassidy not to ask. She's a tree. Would I was thinking about your feet even seem weird to her? I feel like she would probably just laugh. <laughs> She'd have like a, a, a little chuckle at how awkward Cassidy would be, but I don't think she would find it weird. There's something in the way Elowen skirted that topic that told Cassidy not to ask. Perhaps it was better that she did not hear. One day, when Elowen is ready, no doubt she will tell all to me. There is something else still to consider now. Oh, you said... You said that there's an army approaching. Yeah. Yeah, that's not so good. Yes. The morning after I... spent the night with you. <gasps> oh. Suddenly, Cassidy too was embarrassed. <laughs> no, but it's just like when, when we shared the same bed, they both just blush. <laughs> <laughs> that morning as I was leaving, I noticed a man crouched outside your cottage looking in. Uh-oh. Ah, he must have been one of my brother's agents. This does not bode well. I am not certain that my brother would act so quickly. But the barons... Mm. Perhaps, in their eyes, I have outlived my usefulness as a political pawn. Those soldiers may be coming to bring me back to the castle. By force, if necessary. That's a really optimistic look. <laughs> it's a really optimistic way to see it. Just be like, they might be coming to take me back to the castle. They might be coming to kill you, Cassidy. If you really have, like, outlived your political welcome, as you suspect, do you really think they'd just, like, take you back to the castle? Just be like, well, we'll just lock you in the dungeons forever. Like, really? Oh dear. Oh dear, indeed. <laughs> you do wish to return home, do you not? No. I... Cassidy laughed in self-derision. <sighs> Had you asked me that a week ago, I undoubtedly would have said yes. However, I cannot return to Veromir. Okay, it's Veromir. There is no Elowen there. Alexander would never allow you to come. Yeah. Here will we never meet again. Mm. Uh, what you're not quite understanding yet is why she's important enough to treat her in this way rather than just sending her away if she's not desired. She's a princess. She was the heir to the throne. She was the, the next heir to the throne, but when the king died, there was a vote of no confidence in her reign. And then um, she got arrested for treason, question mark, question mark, her, what, question mark. And she was going to be executed, but her brother Alexander stepped in and stopped her being executed, but ended up with her being exiled here. 
So now she's exiled in the forest until she can be like useful as a as a princess. And everything is fine because her brother loves her and is looking after her and she's fine. She's okay with it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's um it's it's rough. <laughs> There's more that gets revealed throughout the different endings as well. But that's what we have so far as well. So she's she's pretty significant, yeah. She's she's important enough to like keep alive. Because she was literally the heir to the throne. She's a princess. Even if she keeps saying she's not a princess anymore, she still is. <laughs> anyway, yes. Cassidy. It was the first time Elowen had said her name. Cassidy did not let that escape her notice. I will not go, Elowen. I do not want to be without you. Elowen nodded. All right. There is only one thing we can do. Revolution. <laughs> oh, she explained her plan to Cassidy, who accepted it with a few adjustments. The soldiers arrived the next day to a frightful scene. In front of the house, Cassidy lay sprawled on the ground. There was blood everywhere, a knife protruding from her abdomen. A group of soldiers inspected the body, leaning in for a closer look. What is the meaning of this? The princess is dead! Hmm. No doubt oft by the lover we heard about. The harlot deserved no better. <laughs> wow. Still, I do not envy the man who tells King Alexander the noose. Mm. They proceeded to argue over whether or not to bury the body, ultimately deciding that it was well above any of their pay grades. Once their investigation was complete, they left the place. Yeah! <laughs> Got him! Cassidy inhaled the biggest gulp of air of her life. <sighs> that was close. I thought my heart would stop. She heard Elowen laugh from nearby. It's not funny! <laughs> I never dreamed they would get so close. Still, it's good that they did. Yeah. Now there can be no doubt in their minds that you are deceased. Yeah! The only question is, what shall we do if they come back? <laughs> the same thing. Just have another body. That is precisely why you must now enact phase two of my plan. Oh, phase two! Your plan? Oh, come now, let's not split pairs. Phase two is entirely my idea. Of course, as I have not heard of it. <laughs> Phase two. We go on a trip. <laughs> I love how excited she is at that. She's so thrilled. A trip? Yeah. Yes. You have never been anywhere but this forest, correct? Well, that is true. Yeah, l lucky they didn't take her with them as proof of her fake death. Yeah, that would have been a little awkward if they, like, picked up the body. But, um, get the impression that, um, they, that they don't care enough about that. It was more just like, um, is, is the princess still, like, listening to us? Well, if she's dead, that's not a problem anymore, right? Yeah, the plan. Step one, fake death. Step two, elope into the setting sun. Wouldn't you like to see the world with me? Yes! And... Once we've had our fill, we can return here. Yeah. I'm sure after enough time has gone by, they will be fully convinced of my death. Yes. There will be no reason for my brother's agents to return, and we can live here in peace. Ah, so nice. Yes. <gasps> yes. I must say that sounds absolutely lovely. It does. Cassidy took Elowen's hand in hers. Elowen, 
You know, all my life, I only did as my parents wanted, and as Alexander wanted. I had resolved myself to being trapped forever, yet now I am able to do as I wish. It is all thanks to you. No, oh, this I love them so much. I love these two so much. I'm, my heart is so full. I love them. I love them so you much. You were mistaken. If not for you, I would still be a tree. It is I who must thank you. <laughs> hmm? If we can argue about who is more grateful to have met whom, I believe we are happy indeed. Yeah, that's a really nice thing to argue about, huh? <laughs> yes. Yes, you are right, my dear. I can't believe I got a good ending on my first try. I guess, I guess I do remember a little bit. <laughs> so the two ladies set out on a grand adventure. They journeyed to distant lands and saw many new things, met many new people. It was the trip of a lifetime. And once they found themselves sated of the world and their travels were through... Are you quite sure that the recipe calls for these small peppers? No! I do not recall such a thing. This is so pretty. This is so sweet. I love this. Oh my goodness. I love Elowen with her hair in a bun like that. And the ponytail. Oh, I love this. Oh. I am sure, my love. Uh -huh. Look. You can make as many adorable noises as you want. I shall not relent. One day you will have to get used to eating dishes with some spice. <laughs> <sighs> yes. And no saying, only a kiss from you can relieve my sore tongue either. But it's true. I, I would never. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's so cute. That's so lovely. I love this. Though she was quite sure that she had. At least once or twice. Perhaps the two of them are still there now. Living happily ever after. Though we may journey many miles, I know well where my true home lies. By your side, where I remain. To watch with you every sunrise. Truly free. End. Got the truly free ending. I did not expect to get that ending on my first playthrough. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. That was so lovely. Who wants to see me do all the wrong things now? <laughs> Who wants to see me do things as badly as I can? I love that ending. I think there's there's another ending that I think I personally prefer a little bit more as like a, a non-bad ending, but I love that one. That was a really sweet one to get as my, my first ending. I'm so glad. Right, let's load it. I, I made a save on the very first option. So let's let's go say all the wrong things. Let's see how this goes. Oh, thank you for the, the head pattern hydrate as well. I will have a sip of my monster. He was ready for some bad ends. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, that is highly suspect. I've explored this area many a time and have never seen any abode. And her wording is so vague. What could be the meaning for this? For what could be the meaning for that? I don't understand. Can that be so? Are you accusing me of being a liar? We're off to a great start. <laughs> well, no. I just... I would never lie. Uh -huh. In fact, I am quite incapable of it. Oh my. She seems even more on her guard now. What have I done? Oh, where am I? Okay, now we skip. Now we skip until the next option. Um...
Da, 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 da. Just okay. I've I've already made loads of saves. I don't need to save. We can like skip through quickly enough. Um, let's go. She must have had a bad experience because we're we're gonna keep going. Like this is the suspicious Cassidy one. This is the round where every option I choose is gonna be Cassidy overthinking and being suspicious and wondering what's going on as opposed to the other ones where it's just like, oh, she must love trees. Oh, she must be so happy. I'm sure she has her reasons. This is like super, super vigilant, Cassidy. We humans are... Ba -ba 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 -ba. Next one. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was the joke. Like, I would try and not be scary. Uh, that is not necessary. Let's take her fully seriously. I don't understand what you mean. I certainly don't think you're frightening. Oh, your earlier mm. words seem to suggest otherwise. I was merely... Oh, never mind. Yeah, things aren't going well how this time. How confusing you are. You're welcome. Still, how curious it is... Yeah, and now we skip again. Um, it's not like that. Immediately defensive. We're going defensive. We are going to... Uh... Oh no, we're gonna defend Alexander. Oh no. She dried her eyes delicately, but with determination. Now was not the time for tears. Things are... complicated. It's not as clear-cut as you seem to believe. Undoubtedly. The affairs of men oft are. See, this is already, like, so othering now as well. It's very much just, like, you versus me. Just like, yeah, men are like that. She's leaning more tree direction however all that i need to know is that he is there and you are here that he is responsible for that difference can be inferred quite easily yeah. you are a fast reader to be able to jump to such conclusions so swiftly i am not unhappy here elowen are you sure can you say that truly with an unclouded heart Elowen peered into Cassidy's eyes, and their gazes held like two magnets, pulling each other in closer and closer still. Yet, Cassidy could not do it. She could not look Elowen in the eye and tell an untruth. Elowen looked to the window. It has gotten dark. Okay, I think we skip again now. Yep, here we go. Yeah, let's, let's do like a really nice letter to Alexander now. We trust Alexander. He would never do anything bad for her, for us. I, I want Alexander to see me at my best. I want to approve myself, because he saved me. I do not wish to disappoint him or bore him with min, min, minutia, minutia, minu, minutia, min, minutia. Hold on. Oh, where's my phone? How do you pronounce that? I think it's minutia, maybe? Minutia? Minutia? What? Minutia. Oh, minutia. Minutia. Okay. Minutia. My original draft. Also, Grace Snow, hello! Welcome, welcome! <coughs> yeah, my minutia. Interesting. I've another word that I've seen written down, I've never said out loud before. <laughs> but welcome in, Grace Snow. How's it going? Welcome. I'm um I'm trying to get bad ends. I just got a good end as my first ending for the, the game. And so now I'm proceeding to do things very wrong. So please be warned, bad ends are coming. <laughs> but welcome, welcome. Thank you for the gym too. Hold on. There we go. Always any excuse to press the gym button. My original draft? She sighed, recalling the contents of the now ripped up pages. I pined far too much. I would never whine, of course, but my words were drawing near that. I only... She was afraid to admit, even to herself, how much she missed her brother. Cassidy finished the letter without much of a fuss. She wrote briefly of Elowen, a passerby, helping her find firewood. Ba ba ba, is this the same? 
yeah, this, this letter looks the same as before. Most of the contents, however, were in regards to the book she had recently finished. Perhaps this will encourage my dear brother to send me more. Boop. We skip again. <laughs> no, I won't save. It's fine. We continue to be suspicious. I wonder why she does not eat. Huh. Kind of suspicious. And here we go. Here we go. My brother put me here for my own safety. This is new. Because we've been defending Alexander now. This is different. I... Oh, just that one line. Okay. She found herself repeating her thoughts on the matter mechanically, things she only half believed. She had said all these things before. It seemed she no more believed them now. As a result of your dear Alexander's intervention, you were exiled, were you not? <laughs> you think you know where this is going, Suzume? So do I. <laughs> so do I. Here we go. It's clear to me that you know nothing of politics. How can you level such accusations against the one who saved my life? I've previously stated my belief that you are kind and good. Yeah. Boo, 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 skip, skips. Here we go. See, I'm, I'm doing this bad end first because I want to get it out the way. I'm <laughs> If anyone is curious, I am aiming for a specific bad end at the moment because I want it gone. I want it done. I don't want to have to do it again. <laughs> but, uh, what a shock that was. What a shock that was. I had thought her a refined, elegant personage, but her rage was palpable and quite unseemly. Whatever her reasoning, it was not right for her to react so. She doesn't know Alexander, and so she wouldn't understand him, but I do. Yes, I, I know Alexander. I trust him. He's my darling little brother. Boop, 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 boop. More skips. Oh, here we go. Oh, and then the sentence about marriage that was in the letter that was just like, yes, you must marry. Oh, that's so thoughtful, isn't it? So nice. How thoughtful. I'm sure that Alexander does not wish me to live the rest of my life here. How thoughtful of him to find some way for me to ex escape exile. Even if, it's, even if it is through a political marriage, I must say I'm not very excited at the prospect. Boop. Suddenly, Cassidy heard a rustling nearby. Hmm? Oh, hi. She looked up from her letter and saw Elowen standing a few feet away. Elowen. Skippies. Yeah. I should not have burdened you with my circumstances to begin with. Well, you were somewhat harsh, you know. But... Regardless, I am sorry. I love this apology as well, just being like, well, you were mean, but uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. This isn't going great, it isn't, is it? <laughs> no. Skippies. Poisonous? Are you sure? Doubt. Are you certain it's poisonous? Don't trust her? I have no doubt. I've lived in these woods for a long time. Feels so bad making these decisions. There was a melancholy in Elowen's countenance that Cassidy had not yet seen, not even thought the woman capable of. I think we skippy now? Yeah. Here we go. There. I will gladly sleep on the divan or the ground. I am not choosy. Oh, that won't do at all. You're a guest. Hmm. Hmm, this is awkward. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. Back to here. Just be like, oh, oh yeah, and then this is the part about her family. And, um, why the hesitation? kind of suspicious. Why, why are you hesitating? It's a simple question, is it not? Why does she have such trouble talking about it? Though I suppose my own situation was not so simple to speak of. Has your family gone away? Elowen, with her mouth in a grim straight line, stared at Cassidy. 
<laughs> I'm far braver than you would have been. I'm well. I want to get all of the endings, so it's it's gonna be a bit of an adventure because there's quite a few bad endings in this game. <laughs> but uh, I think I have an idea of like how to get most of them, and if not, I can probably look up a guide or something if it's if it's getting too late. But I I want all of the endings because like even with the bad ends. Even with the ends, which is just like, oh, this is a bad end, you get more information about the story through it. And it makes things so interesting. I, I want to reveal all of the plot lines. It is a trying subject. I'm not quite sure where to begin. Now we skippy. Yes. Again, she's gone in the morning. What could she be doing so early? Yeah, we've got suspicious Cassidy now. We've got Cassidy who does not trust Elowen at all. It's highly suspect. Mm hmm She could no longer ignore the gnawing feeling of dread. Perhaps she would ask Elowen upon their next meeting. I'll have to be careful with the rest of my supplies. The next shipment is a while away yet. Cannot feast with Elowen too often. That being said, it is not as if she really eats when she's with me. No, she doesn't eat at all, does she? She yawned and slowly pulled herself out of bed. With or without Eloan, she would have to get on with her day. <laughs> Don't we get the hums? Uh, perhaps I should write Alexander a letter? I think we should. I think that's a great idea now. Let's, let's write Alexander a lovely letter. It's important that my brother knows what goes on in my life. Yeah. After finishing her breakfast, she set herself to the task of writing to Alexander as usual. Yet, her heart was not all in it. Her handwriting was sloppy. Though always lonesome before, the former princess's life now felt so much emptier without Elowen's presence. Though she should be accustomed to such solitude. Yeah, this is Skippy's. Yeah. She could see it so clearly in her mind's eye. What do I choose here? I guess, like, I wonder if she's still there. I wonder if she is there now. Somewhere in the forest. Doing suspicious things. She passed the rest of the day peacefully, but with a sense of unease. Alright, thinking it all over. Elowen is... unearthly. Cassidy suddenly realized that all of the things she knew about Elowen pointed to something potentially horrible. She'd been so overcome by the woman's peculiar charm and beautiful looks that she had overlooked something. Cassidy shook her head. Perhaps she was jumping to conclusions too quickly. I must be a little lonely, mm -hmm. that's all. I haven't seen her since that night. She has always been honest with me. Mm -hmm. Even if there are some things she cannot yet reveal. Yeah. She can be... Blunt, perhaps. But I believe she means well. Remembering the last several days... Alright, I'm just gonna, like, save over that one. Hmm. Let's go monstrous first. Elowen is truly monstrous. A letter? So soon after the last? I did send him a letter yesterday, but it is not possible for him to have read it and replied already. Uh-oh. Right? Right? Perhaps my brother finally understands just how much I miss him. If I leave here, if one day Alexander allows me to leave, what else awaits me? Exile is much more preferable to death. Still, perhaps Elowen was right to be suspicious of Alexander. But no, no, Alexander, I will trust in you and wait. Oh, I don't like clicking this. I don't like clicking this. She knew the truth, perhaps, yet she was afraid to accept it. Without her love for her brother, her loyalty to her kingdom... She was nothing. Alexander, I trust that you will do what's best for me. 
and for Veromir. I will... I will await your decision. She could not think of Elowen, however, without feeling a twinge of guilt. She let out a long sigh. Her thoughts had taken her on a not-so-merry chase. If I dwell on these thoughts, there will be no end to them. She brewed herself a cup of tea to calm her nerves and began reading a new book. I think I skip you now. Yeah, okay, like one line. Cassidy was sitting on the divan, enjoying a warm cup of tea as she read the latest book her brother had sent her. It was a darker tale than she was accustomed to. The tale of a tragic young mermaid. It seemed to be a fairy tale from a faraway land. Certainly, Veramir had simpler, happier stories. Or perhaps those were the only ones she had been allowed to learn. Goodness! Every step she takes feels like walking upon knives? It feels so much worse doing this after just getting the good end. <laughs> oh my goodness. How dreadful! How could this author be so terribly cruel? Huh. Perhaps that is what ails Elowen. No, that would be ridiculous. Suddenly, the front door to the cottage swung open without knock or warning. Cassidy dropped her book in alarm. <sighs> there was something dreadful standing in the doorway. A monster! <sighs> Cassidy muttered this under her breath, overcome by fear and awe. It is not safe here. Yet no matter the appearance, Cassidy would never mistake that voice. Melodious, she had found it not long ago. Beautiful, she had thought its bearer until this very moment. She would be hard pressed to describe Elowen as beautiful now. What did you say? There is a large army approaching from the east. They... they wear your colors. Alexander... Cassidy could not help but gasp. The monster nodded. I am afraid so. You must away with me. Cassidy bit her lip. Alexander would not harm me. If anything... They must be here to protect me. From this monster. Yes. Yes, of course. Quickly grasping the situation, the ex-princess calmed herself and tapped into her many years of diplomacy lessons. I will come right away. Then... Would you mind waiting for me outside? I will gather my things quickly. Yes. I won't be but a moment. Of course. The monster turned and left through the still open door, its movements slow and measured as always. As soon as Elowen was outside, Cassidy flew forward and slammed the door shut. Cassidy! Ignoring Elowen's sad, feeble voice, Cassidy locked and bolted the door. For good measure, she dragged the divan in front of it. The door shook as Elowen tried to enter, but would not give way. Dang, this isn't the one. I was gonna say, I like the the ending I'm aiming for. I really hope that's not your favorite bad end. Like, ah, <laughs> huh. ow. Why? How can I possibly heed the words of a monster? Who knows what you will do to me once you have me outside? She must be a demon, here to corrupt me. It is just as Alexander said to the barons. I allowed your beauty, your charm to corrupt me. I have sinned. I will sin no longer. Oof. Why? Be gone, monster! 
darken my doorstep no more! Oh, feels bad. Elowen said nothing in reply. But then, wordlessly, the monster ambled towards the windows. Oh no! I didn't think about blocking those! But the monster made no move to enter forcefully. It just stood there with the same blank look on its face. In some ways, Cassidy felt that was worse. Had Elowen moved just enough to follow her words to the letter, to darken the doorstep no more? It seemed like something she might do. The thought made Cassidy's heart ache ever so slightly. And the night passed like that, with Cassidy pressed against the door in fear, and Elowen standing in place, still as a tree. Watching. Eventually, after what felt like a lifetime, the sun rose. It's finally morning. If the army truly is coming, I wish they'd get here sooner. The day breaks. <gasps> Cassidy looked to the window in alarm. Could it be that Elowen hadn't slept either? Elowen stood there still, looking even more haggard than she had the night before. The monster's gaze was unfocused. It seemed not to be looking at Cassidy, but rather through her. I have failed. I could not understand the most important thing. I could not convey my love without a voice. And so, this wisteria must wither in the harsh light of seventh day past. Before Cassidy's eyes, Elowen crumbled into wilted wisteria petals and dust. The monster, the woman, was no more. Deep in the wood, a wisteria tree once adored by a maiden withered and died away as well. When bargain is struck, its terms must be met. Else take on your fate, and more suffering beget. Ash to ash. Whew. That went well. That went well, right? Huh. Right. What do I want to do now? I guess I, I should probably just start doing like random options and try and see what happens when I do different combinations of things. Pain ending. Oh, don't worry, there's more pain endings. <laughs> it's not the only one. <laughs> oh, let's, let's try for... Hold on, how do I... I'm trying to think, how would I... I'm gonna load from this part. And I'm going to see if I get a different ending if I do dot dot dot. Uh, I'm going to be like, Alexander, how long must I stay here? How long must I stay here in the forest? Will I forever be here atoning for my mistakes? That's the same ending, okay. Right, let's start uh, clicking things. Let's go... I don't know which ones to pick. Just be like, stone throw. How can that be? Let's be a bit more like innocent, a bit more trusting. Let's all, oh, she must love trees. She, she must just love trees. I agree. 
Nature is wonderful, isn't it? At times, it can be. This is rather awkward. What does she mean by that? The two continued through the forest, gathering wood and passing the time with easy conversation. As they walked leisurely, the sun began to sink. So too did the satchel of wood. Oh, I can skip this. I'm a silly. Ba ba ba, perhaps she was joking. Let's just be very sweet and innocent this time. Very trusting, super trusting. Oh, actually, oh, let's, let's be super trusting, but also defending Alexander. So, we, we, we don't suspect Elowen, but also we're defending Alexander. Let's try that, see if that'll work. So, I want Alexander to see me at my best. Oh my goodness, Mari, hello! Gay Red Panda Raid, come on in, welcome! Welcome on in, how's it going? Thank you for the raid, thank you so much, welcome in! Hello, funky people, hello, funky raiders! Come on in, you are just in time for some delicious bad ends. Welcome. <laughs> How's it going? How was the stream? What were you playing? What were you playing today? The, the games and demos. Was it another one of the, the Game Jam games? Was it something different? I'm curious. But uh, thank you so much for bringing the raid this way. Welcome in, raiders. Yuri Pan oh. <laughs> I see. <laughs> That was the first game I played of the Game Jam games. It was such a hilarious tone to start them off on. <laughs> I hope you had fun with it. I hope you had fun with it. So based in Yuri Build, yes. Um, embrace serfdom, blah, 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 everything. G good times. Uh, <laughs> I hope you had fun with it though. Thank you for bringing the raid this way. For anyone who's new here, hello. I'm Liri, I'm a not-so-pink-haired cat girl from the UK, and I love comfy games and puzzle games and uh, women, and I'm currently playing without a voice, which I played this game when it first came out a very long time ago, and I haven't played it since it's been updated and gotten like voice acting and additional content, so I'm revisiting it for the first time in a really, really long time, to be honest. Like, I've, I'd forgotten so many details. But it's been going so well so far. I, the first thing I did, just picking like the options that resonated with me, I got a good end. So now um, I'm currently on the hunt for bad ends. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to do everything wrong at the moment. So please be warned, um, there will be bad ends approaching in the future. I'm, I'm trying to do everything wrong because <laughs> I want to complete it. I want to get all the endings. But oh, it's it's been so good though. But yes, um, just for for October, I am Draculary. I've dyed my hair. I've dyed my tail. I've changed my clothes a bit. I've put in some red contact lenses, and I am ready to make some terrible, terrible decisions as I unlock all of the bad endings. Just got one great, um, emotionally devastating one, and now my plan of action is. Uh, I don't know if you've played without a voice before. But if you have, I'm basically trying to just be as innocent as possible, but also defend my brother to see what happens. I think it's going to go badly. I'm ready for it. <laughs> Yuri Paddle's like playing a game of chicken with Steve. It really is, oh my goodness. The amount of times like as I was playing it, I was just like, Scion, what are you making me say right now? <laughs> oh, it was so good. Such a all of the game jam games is so good. Not the brother, he sucks. What are you talking about? He would never hurt us. It's for our own good, right? <laughs> but yeah, it's um, I've I've been having so much fun revisiting this. It's it's so nice to see like the new art, because when I first played this, like I. I've been friends with Addy Rosa for so long. I've been friends with Addy for years and years now. <laughs> I played the game when it first came out, before it was even on Steam. And all of like the, the CGs and stuff have been updated with nicer art. And it's so nice to see them because I haven't actually seen them before. I kind of been like doing my best to avoid seeing the new art until I got the chance to replay it myself. And it's been so good. I'm, I'm having so much fun with it. 
But uh, I'm uh, I'm glad you had a fun question mark with Yuri Paddle. <laughs> and thank you for bringing the raid this way. I know it's super late for you, so if you have to go get some rest, if you have to look after yourself, that is completely fine. But if you want to stick around for a bit, I'm who's ready for some devastation. <laughs> But yeah, I've, I've been friends with Addy for so long. It's so wild to think about how long it's been now. It's it's very wild. But uh, let me be, be, be. For anyone who doesn't know as well, Addy Rosa is the artist for this game and also the artist for my model and most other stuff I have. <laughs> and also a very good friend of mine. But yes, I'm... I've got like an hour or so until I have to go and get dinner, so I'm, I want to try and get as many bad ends as I can. And hopefully also the, the other good end as well, because the other good end that I think of is like my favorite ending, I think. But yeah, I love her art so much. It's so pretty. Yeah, gonna pass out. Good luck with stream. Hope I can make all the bad choices. Oh, me too. Thank you. <laughs> I hope you rest well. And welcome in, raiders. Welcome in, everybody from the raid. Hello. Hello, Addy, our beloved artist. Gently holds her in my hand. Right, uh, I want Alexander to see me at my best. Boop, boop. Imagine Addy's just here hearing this. <laughs> well, I think it's like 1 a.m. for her, like 1, 2 a.m. for her, so probably not. But at the same time, like, I've told her this to her face anyway, it's not a secret. <laughs> She knows this. It's fine. I'm not the type to just, like, compliment my friends in private. I will tell it to them to their faces, because they deserve to know how great they are. <laughs> right, uh, I, I suppose she's already eaten. She's probably fine. We're not suspicious at all. This is very innocent, Cassidy. She's probably already eaten. It's fine. There is a healthy glow to Elowen's face. I suppose she's already eaten. She strikes me as the type who would worry about her figure. And it is so late in the day already, yes. I'm sure she has already supped and can eat no more. Cassidy endeavoured not to take offence and instead greedily partook of the crackers herself. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's keep skipping. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Puzzled by the, the strange behaviour. Hmm. I'm sure she had her reasons. We're not suspicious. She's probably got her reasons. Oh, the sentence about marriage from our brother. That's so thoughtful of him. So thoughtful and kind. To um, have a political marriage. It's so, so nice of him. It's lovely. Poisonous? Oh, how do you know so much? We're not doubting her. We're just inquisitive. You know so much about the flora and fauna he Yeah. Right, Elowen doesn't eat very much. No wonder she's so thin. Ba -ba -ba. Oh, here we go. Uh, oh, you eat so little. I'm worried for your health. She's very sweet. <laughs> I eat enough. I do not like doing anything in excess. I see. I see. I see. Her tone left no room for argument. Back to skipping. Sleepy. And then perhaps she cannot say. That's probably a reason. It's fine. This is the most trusting Cassidy. Super trusting Cassidy. Right, I'm going to save here because... Hmm... I'm not going to write him a letter this time. I think this may lead to Suzume's favorite end, maybe. Hmm. About the tree. I wonder if she's there. Very I wonder if she is there now. Somewhere in the forest. Just not considering too much, not not thinking very much. Uh Elowen is a strange. but so are you. It's very true. Cassidy shook her head. Even if Elowen was a tad strange, Cassidy knew that there was more to her than that. Wasn't she there? is capable of joke. Yep, we got all of this. Uh, Elowen... 
cares for me. I believe it. Oh, there's the delivery. But also, Alexander, I will trust in you and wait. She's so naive. This is like the, the most supremely naive Cassidy ending. Just picking every option that's just like not suspicious in the slightest. Way too trusting of literally everybody. Here we go. Okay, well, it is a new ending. Because we're not skipping. While Cassidy sat on the divan contemplating whether or not she wished to go on a walk, the door to the cottage burst open. There was a monstrous looking creature in her doorway. It breathed deep, ragged breaths. You must. You must leave this place. It was only when she heard the monster's voice that Cassidy realized this was Elowen. Yet she was no longer the Elowen whom Cassidy was familiar with. What are you saying? <laughs> it is not safe here. What? Elowen grabbed at Cassidy's arm, her nails digging into the exiled princess's soft flesh. Ouch! Oh. Oh, she's hurting. Come. Come now. Protesting loudly all the way, Cassidy was dragged outside. Cassidy had no earthly idea why Elowen was behaving this way, why she looked this way. What does she mean it's not safe? She began to fear that this was a trap, one that had been previously laid and was now snapping shut. Stop this! After a long while of walking and pleading with Elowen to listen, Cassidy was finally able to yank her arm from the monster's grip. You... you come to me like this? With no explanation? Expect me to follow you? Like... this? Like this, yeah. Do you even know how you currently appear? What kind of monster are you? Oh, feels bad. <sighs> Elowen froze in place. For several seconds, she did not move. Finally, she slowly, slowly brought her hands up to her face. She appeared to be looking at them for the first time. <gasps> so you find me disgusting, do you? Monstrous! Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Wait, hold up, you're so Dory. You drew her! Wait, you drew Elowen? Wait, I want to see that. Or Cassidy? I want to see. <laughs> Cassidy quickly regretted her harsh words. I should not have said it like that. It was not very regal of me. Perhaps there is an explanation for all this. Yet when her gaze drifted to Elowen's countenance, she could feel nothing but revulsion. Their eyes met. Oh, it feels bad. I gotta dig. Yes, please dig. I would love to see you. Mobile app not letting you use redeems. What redeem did you want to use? I can just do it for you. Did you want to do the, the hydrate posture check? <laughs> just, just type like mobile redeem <laughs> and I'll, I'll just do it for you. <laughs> Their eyes met. Cassidy recoiled in disgust. Suddenly, Elowen began to shake. Elowen? <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> she thought the monster might be crying, but... <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Elowen was laughing hysterically. She doubled over, clutching her sides as she laughed and laughed. Then she looked up once more and met Cassidy's gaze. Her feigned gaiety ceased immediately. What a fool I was to think that you could 
Understand me. Cassidy felt a stabbing pain in her abdomen. It burned. It was agony. She turned her gaze downward and saw that Elowen had impaled her with her arm, now somehow sharp as a blade. That you could love me! I was right. She's... Crying. Yes! Oh my gosh! There you go. There you go. I hope you're proud of yourself. I hope you're happy. I hope it makes you feel good. To want me to do that. Thank you. <laughs> Cassidy's heart still beat for a short while after that. She was dimly aware of something clawing, rummaging through her entrails. She was dimly aware of the sound of something eating. Where is her heart? She said I must devour it to be free. <laughs> Love you too. <laughs> oh, wow. I beg you, release me! Tears and blood mingled on two women's faces and became inseparable. And then there was no one there but a monster and the corpse upon which it fed. Monster, monster, where dost thou roam? Hast thou a heart? Hast thou a home? Human, thou art monster true. So criticize me not. I will chew thy dainty bones and leave thy flesh to rot. Lovely. Dining as lovers do. Well, that went well. <laughs> that went well, right? We're all having a good time. We're, we're all enjoying this. Things are going well. Yeah, it's a tasty ending. I mean, she did get her heart. She did get her heart. So you missed the good end. You'll be honest, you're not getting great vibes from this Elowen lady. No, it's okay. It's okay. That it's not her fault there. That's that was an awful situation. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry. We'll we'll figure this out. But not yet. There's still more bad ends. There's still more bad ends. Anyway, next. Next, let's go for Hmm. What should I try and do next? Right, let me load this, because I did this one and I didn't write Alexander a letter. I wonder if I write him a letter. If things will be different. <gasps> Thank you for the hair change too! Oh, you brushed my hair out. Thank you! And the head pad. Thank you, thank you. My hair is now neat. <laughs> Let's write him a letter. It's important that my brother knows what goes on in my life. Bum 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 bum. Could see it so clearly in her mind's eye. Uh, I wonder if she's there. I wonder if. Elowen is strange. Elowen is kind. I will trust in you and wait, Alexander. <gasps> yeah, I think this is enough to change the ending. Yes. Yes, I think oh okay. Yes, alright. Um <laughs> Cassidy was sitting at the divan, a warm cup of tea in hand as she reread Alexander's letter. His letters always gave her some comfort. This is the one I did. <laughs> Oh <laughs> Here we go. 
the ex-princess presently recalled that an agent had delivered another letter to her earlier. I was so lost in my thoughts that I completely forgot. How silly of me. <gasps> you just retweeted it. Hold on, I want to check. I want to check. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. <gasps> oh, this is so pretty. This is so pretty. I'm, I'm linking it. I'm linking it. Check this out, everyone. It's so pretty. Ah. Oh. I love this, but be warned as well. Uh, don't like look at the quote tweet um, if like you don't want to be spoiled. But um, also like if you don't care about spoilers or you've already played the game, it is fine. <laughs> but oh, it's so pretty. I love that. That art is so good. You need to hide. I'm sorry. I'm going to. I'm going to compliment you. <laughs> I'm sorry. You just have to be complimented now. <laughs> it's so pretty though. I love that. Thank you. It's him, isn't it? I, it's, it? I think that's where we're going right now, Suzume, yes. Um, a lovely, lovely ending time. How silly of me. Forgot about the other Cassidy. letter. <gasps> Cassidy froze. Could it be? She looked up to see who had addressed her. Elowen. There is a large army approaching. They are very nearly here. She's normal. She doesn't look monstrous. An army? Cassidy giggled, shaking off her nervousness. We hate him? Why would you hate him? All he has ever done is um, look after her and keep her safe and been gr great, right? He's he's not done bad things, right? It's completely fine, right? Why wouldn't you trust him in this situation with all the knowledge we've gleaned? Why would you be suspicious? <laughs> Cassidy giggled, shaking off her nervousness. <laughs> there must be a training exercise or a war in a neighboring country. Yeah, surely. Hey, wear your colors. Did... did your brother mention nothing in his letters? No. Nothing. Mm. But there is nothing to fear. If they were my kingdom's colors, as you say, surely they are here to aid me. Yeah, surely. Fully armed. Yes! <laughs> oh, Cassidy. <laughs> my brother loves me, you see! Oh, Cassidy. Have you heard of something called Stockholm Syndrome? <laughs> Cassidy's voice shook as she desperately tried to convince both Elowen and herself. She was worthy of love. Of her brother's love and... You will not come with me? It was a question phrased as an absolute. Elowen already knew the answer. I have no reason to. I have everything I need, right here. Yes, you're fine, you're happy. If you say it enough times, it'll be true, right? You're, you're happy, you're fine. And then she heard it. The awful sound of steel boots trampling the flowers, the forest. She, who had been present for any number of military training exercises, could not mistake the sound of an army's march. But even Cassidy could not have predicted who would be leading them. <sighs> Hi. The first emotion she felt was pure joy. She was happy to see her brother once more. I thought that we could never meet again, but here he is. Alexander's eyes flicked over to Elowen. Without even attempting to mask it, he looked her over from head to toe. He did not look at all pleased. You are continually surprising me, sister. Sent into exile, and yet you continue to repeat your same sins. So... No. You're mistaken! I believe not. 
I trusted you once. You could have told me anything and I would have believed. But you have chosen to repay my love with dishonor time and time again. Oh, this manipulative asshole. You are a danger to our kingdom. An exploitable weakness. Worse, you are a sinner of the highest order. Oh, he has the most punchable face. He has the most punchable face. I want to break his glasses. Sorry, that was really violent for me. <laughs> me usually just like, I hope they step on Lego bricks. I'm... <laughs> you know he's bad when I'm saying like actually violent things. <laughs> the mild Melma, the, the mild mannered uh, Liri being like, yeah, I want to break his glasses. <laughs> Alexander! Preferably by punching him in the face. Uh, I mean, anyway. Uh... Tempt me not into sin. I'm deaf to your honeyed words. As your brother, as the one who entered this world with you, it falls to me to remove you from it. This is the last act of my love. No! Mm. Elowen reacted faster. With superhuman speed, she rushed in front of Cassidy to shield her from her brother's sword. But despite his delicate looks, Alexander was skilled with the blade. All Elowen's attempt earned her was the privilege of being impaled at the same time as the former princess. The sword pierced through them both. As her consciousness faded, Cassidy watched Elowen's body dissolve into dust and withered petals. Wisteria petals. So you tempted even a forest spirit with their salacious ways. But such demons do not have souls. She cannot follow you. Worry not, dear sister. One day I will join you and we shall never be parted again. She could not tell if what she felt was despair or ecstasy. They say that love is blind. Yet clearly I saw you. You say that you loved me, but that was never true. So it would seem, my dear, that blind love is deaf, too. Too late into your arms. Whoa. That one is one which is just like... Ugh. Ugh. So much. Yeah, oh my goodness. The, the voice acting for Alexander is so phenomenal. It, it, you really do just hate him. You just hate him. So much. It is incredible. But also, hello, Mook. I didn't actually say hello properly, but hi. And Shogun, hello as well. Lovely to see you. Welcome, welcome. It's a sad ending. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing all the bad endings at the moment, so... I got one good end as my very first one. I've, I've still got a couple bad ends to go, I think. I'm not sure, like, how to aim for them, to be honest. So I might look up a guide if I get stuck for a while, but I think I can get all the endings done before I have to end the stream. Especially when I'm, like, skipping through a lot of the text. Hmm... Alright, what should I do now? Let's do... When cold... Oh wait, I can just load the first file. For the first option. I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do... Hmm. Hmm. I'm not sure, maybe like a mixture? Guide is in the art book too. Yeah, I know there's the, the guide in the art book as well, so I can refer to that if I if I need it. 
I got it somewhere in here. And I've, I've got the digital digital copy too. Let's, uh, cause, oh, what are the other bad endings? I'm trying to remember them. There's, how do I get the, uh, hmm. Let's be... Like, let's be super, like, that suspect I don't trust. But also not believing Alexander. And see what that does. Excuse me, we're not going to defend Alexander. Let's try... Not that Alexander would care. And I wonder why she doesn't eat. Suspicious. Uh, what a shock that was. Uh, I don't want to marry. Poisonous? Are you sure doubting her? Ba -ba 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 -ba, sleepy. Why the hesitation? Uh, let's not write Alexander a letter. <gasps> yeah, this is different. Okay. That can wait. I can hardly focus when I'm so preoccupied with where Elowen has gone. So this is slightly different, so we might be on track. She wondered if the other woman would visit again today. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Um, let's go... Mm. I wonder if she's there. I wonder if she is there now. And then, Elowen is strange. I'll just save over that. I'm gonna go with the dot dot dots. I'm not gonna say she's fully monstrous, but also just kind of like, mmm. Ah, oh, here we go. Yep. Perhaps Elowen was right to be suspicious of Alexander. Alexander, did you ever truly love me? Ba 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 ba. Oh, here we go. Yeah, this is th just the bad one, I think. It's just like. And so evening fell. And the rest of the story was lost to time. Did King Alexander completely erase his sister from history? And what of the maiden Elowen? It would forever remain a mystery. Perhaps you too will soon forget. A story unfinished ending. Nice. <laughs> the non-ending. The, um... Goodness gracious... I didn't d didn't manage to win Elowin over or trust Alexander enough. <laughs> Your second fave bad end because it isn't an end. It isn't. It's a mystery. We don't know what happened afterwards. It could be anything. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna get the the art book. I'm gonna get the guide. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Where did I save this? Uh, I wonder, hold on, which... Where's my cursor? Here it is. Um, extras. This shows the endings, I think? Yeah, achievements. Got these endings, yep. So I need this one. This is the one I want to get. I want this ending because it's so interesting. I'm trying to remember what this one is. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Okay, gotta walk through. I gotta walk through. Let's do this. Let's get this done. Oh, we're going. Um, let's let's go this one. Let's do this one. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Here we go. We're going to start by saying... Where is my cursor? That's that's what we're going to start with. Here it is. Okay, uh, that is highly suspect. She must have had a bad experience. That is not necessary. 
excuse me? Not that Alexander would care. I wonder why she does not eat. Still very suspicious, but also... I do not want to marry. Are you sure? Are you sure it's poisonous? Ba -ba 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 -ba? Why the hesitation? So it's still very suspicious, Cassidy. But also, like, not being on Alexander's side either. Alright, should we write Alexander a letter? Let us not. Uh, I wonder if she's there. I wonder if she is there now. Thinking it all over. Eloin is strange. Dot dot dot. And then we will trust in Alexander and wait, even though we don't actually trust him. We will still trust and wait. Here we go, here we go. Cassidy considered going for a walk, but decided against it. Her foray into her own thoughts had left a shiver running down her spine. Perhaps Eloin needed some time to herself. Perhaps I ought to take some as well. Yeah. And so she resolved not to seek out the other woman. Not to seek the other woman out this day. Let's see. Maybe I'll have some tea. That sounds delightful. She turned and was about to head into the kitchen when the front door slammed open. The exiled princess whirled around in alarm. Before her was... Uh-oh. Eloin? Cassidy. It was the first time Eloin had said her name. Normally, Cassidy would be overjoyed to hear it upon Eloin's lips. Yet the Eloin before her now could only be described as a monster. What is... what has happened to you? Eloin turned and caught a glimpse of her own reflection in the window. <sighs> that is not important. You must away. It's not safe. What? Horrified both by the implications and by Eloin's appearance, she took a few steps backward. Cassidy, are you hearing what I say? You must leave here immediately. Come with me. I will keep you safe. You... keep me safe? She retreated further. Looking like that? <sighs> no, what am I saying? I've angered her. She's angry. Cassidy turned and ran the last few steps into the kitchen. Eloin was fast on her heels, but Cassidy knew her own house well. There had to be something she could use as a weapon. Something to defend herself with. Cassidy! <laughs> the former princess's hand closed around the handle of a knife, which she brandished in front of her. Don't come any closer, or I'll... But Eloin's momentum could not be stopped. She rushed forward. There was a dreadful sound, and then the shock of the situation overpowered her consciousness, and Cassidy knew no more. <laughs> Eloin awoke slowly in the lingering evening light, her belly burning with the sting of a wound. Nearby, someone was whispering to themselves over and over. Not just a harlot, but a murderess. Not just a harlot, but a murderess. There was a strange human just outside the kitchen window. Where? It was then that Eloin finally noticed Cassidy, lying in a heap on the floor, three arrows protruding from her back. Cassidy, you're... dead. Dead. Dead! The happy...
hapless archer was not spared. Yet the consumption of his heart did nothing to heal Elowen. There was only one heart that would lift her curse. And she had no desire now to take it. Elowen closed her eyes and prayed to the capricious gods for death to take her back to Cassidy's side. Good intentions can be led astray. Doubt and fear can a pure heart sway. A double-edged thorn. And... Oh boy! Right, two endings left, I think. So let's do the next bad ending, and then we're going to do what is personally my favorite good end. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Right, uh, that is highly suspect. She must have had a bad experience. We. Oui. That is not necessary. Excuse me? I want Alexander to see me at my best. Oh, I always hate picking that one. Oh yeah, this is the one. This is the one. This is the one. Oh boy. With flowing eloquence, Cassidy composed her letter, sure to show her brother all the deference he was owed. To my dear Alexander, I hope that this letter finds you well, dearest brother. I have been utterly depressed awaiting your next letter. My days here are so dull, you see. I eat, sleep, and read books. The only thing that has brightened my days has been the acquaintance of a young woman who lives nearby. Now, I remember well your urgings to keep my presence a secret. I have not gone into the nearby town whatsoever. But it seems this woman lives alone, same as me. And we are not so close, merely acquaintances. Surely you will not deny me all human contact. You are always in my heart. For you alone, I pine and weep. I long to be home with you again. Great, thanks. Thanks for telling him about her. That's great. That's a great thing to do, Cassidy. She could not for a moment forget the person responsible for her comfortable lifestyle now. Please never forget your poor sister who loves you so much. Done. Okay. Finally, she gave the front of an envel the envelope a kiss before addressing it to Alexander. Get that out of here. Get that out of here. Uh, I wonder why she doesn't eat. Oh, what a shock that was. Oh, that's, yeah, the, the marriage, that's so thoughtful. Thank you, Alexander, it's lovely. You sure it's poisonous? Uh Why the hesitation? Here we, oh, here we go, here we go. When evening fell, Cassidy decided to go on a walk. It felt stifling somehow to stay at home alone after the night she and Elowen had shared. Some exposure to nature will do me good. It would not do well to dwell on my thoughts for too long. They are too liable to grow dark. Of course, part of her held out hope that she'd run into Elowen again. Cassidy shut the door on her cottage and stepped out into the forest. It would be nice to show Alexander this view. <laughs> ah, then again, there's no reason why he would come here, is there? Hmm? At least now I have Elowen's company to look forward to. Oh, Cassidy. Oh, Cassidy. Suddenly, Cassidy felt a sharp pain in her back. What? Then she felt her body start to crumple. How strange. Why can I not remain standing? As she fell to the ground, she craned her neck just enough to see the arrow protruding from her back. Uh and, in the clearing just behind her, an archer. One who bore the, cl the colors of Beremir. Your king sends his regards to his whore of a sister. 
who only play them false and toy with his feelings. She had no time to process these hissed words. Alexander. Alwyn. A sister loved her brother, but there were flowers she loved more. Her brother loved the notion of her, but he was jealous to his core. The Shadow's Grasp. Okay. Okay, there we go. Bad ends out of the way. It's time. It's time to do... I've, I've, I've saved the best till last. What, what I, like, personally humbly consider the best to last. <laughs> so I'm so excited for this. Let's do it. All right. Where's my cursor? Where, where have I gone? Here I am. Let's go. It is time for the last bad end. I know the last good end. The last end that I know of. And I'm just going to follow the guide. <laughs> but, uh, how can that be? She must love trees. Perhaps she was joking? It's not like that. Uh, I want Alexander to see me at my best. We're being very trusting, Cassidy, again. I suppose she's already eaten. You're gonna be so trusting. I'm sure she had her reasons. Oh, how thoughtful. How do you know so much? Yeah. Perhaps she cannot say. Let's write him a letter. It's important. Um, I wonder if she's there. I wonder if she is there now. Somewhere in the forest. We're not doing the one to ask, like, Elowen is like that tree. We're gonna be like, I wonder if she's there. We haven't figured that out yet. Thinking it all over, Elowen is strange. But Elowen cares for me. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Alexander, how long must I stay here? I've trusted him this whole time, but I'm gonna long for more. Here we go. Cassidy took a sip of her tea and then sighed. I've been dwelling on this all afternoon. Even so, she could not lie to herself about the source of her concern. I haven't seen Elowen in nearly two days. Such a short time, but it weighs heavily on me. She looked out the window to the forest. Perhaps Elowen was somewhere out there. Just as Cassidy was about to act on impulse and seek the other woman out at last, the front door to the cottage slammed open. I apologize if I have caused you alarm, but I have urgent news. Oh. The vague notions that Cassidy had been supposing about Elowen's true nature paled in comparison to the real thing. Here was either a monster or a demon. Of that, Cassidy was certain. Yet, despite the fact that such a realization should inspire nothing but fear and disgust, Cassidy felt neither. For, most importantly, the woman standing before her now was undoubtedly Elowen. What news have you? Her voice did not quiver. There is a large army approaching. I believe they have made camp for the night near here. And I fear they mean you harm. An army? What color were their banners? Red and gold. So they must be from Veromir. Do not worry. My mm. people would never hurt me. But Elowen shook her head. I overheard them talking. They certainly mean to do something terrible. Elowen looked sincere. She was truly worried. But even so, could it truly be? What reason would the army have to be here? I know that you are loath to trust in a monster such as I. No. No? I'm sorry. 
that isn't it. And there we have it. Would a true monster ever refer to themselves as one? Cassidy decided in her heart, then and there, that Elowen was to be trusted. Even so, there was a contradiction here that bothered her. I believe you. Truly. Even though I look... like this. Yes, I trust you, even so. However, the situation bothers me. I believe you, but... I can't believe that the army of my own mm. kingdom would wish me ill. For if they are here, they must surely be because my brother, the king, sent them. And for Alexander to betray me, I simply cannot believe it. Yeah, you wouldn't do that, right? Oh. In her heart, he was always her beloved brother. Your brother is the one who put you here. Do not forget. How could she have forgotten such an important fact? Cassidy hardly knew. No, I didn't forget. I simply grew accustomed to this life. You said that they are camped nearby? Yes. Then you... take me to them? Elowen nodded grimly. I understand. Perhaps that will allow you to come to terms with everything. Even so, I do not relish the pain that doing so will inflict upon you. I am ready. Yeah, she needs to see this herself. Cassidy said, clenching her fists. The two women made their way through the forest. Not long ago, they wandered here together. Those had been such carefree days, feeling far more distant in the past than they had any right to. Once this matter is dealt with, we will have those innocent days once more. Declaring so in her heart, Cassidy followed closely behind Elowen. Soon, they reached the camp. Cassidy and Elowen hid behind trees and in bushes as they approached, careful not to make their presence known. There were at least two dozen soldiers camped there. Is this really such a good idea? It doesn't matter if it's a good idea. Orders are orders. Oh, but still... The soldiers were talking amongst themselves when a tall figure emerged from a tent. <sighs> Cassidy would recognize the person anywhere. In her shock and anger, she gripped Elowen's arm tightly. Elowen turned to look at her. Your brother. She mouthed the words. Cassidy nodded. I understand that it may not seem chivalric to some of you. Worry not. I shall be the one to dispatch my sister. It is my duty. Oh, this guy. And make no mistake, this is for the good of the kingdom. Sure. It will silence the opposition amongst the barons and eliminate our kingdom's one exploitable witness. Wow. It may be difficult, but it is the right thing to do. Wow. Alexander spoke the words in a calm, cool tone. Dispatch, eliminate. Yeah, what a caring, loving brother. They were such harsh words that they stuck in Cassidy's mind. So Alexander came himself. And not to visit, not for my benefit, not even to help me. He came to... Cassidy was overcome by a feeling she had never before felt in her life. Rage. It was an indignant rage. An all-consuming, angry sort of despair. Once, she had loved him. This was her twin brother, one whom she'd entered the world with. She would have given him anything. Except her life! <laughs> As Cassidy gripped tighter onto Elowen's arm, the other woman began to change. Her appearance softened, became more and more human. 
Whatever essence was tainting her seemed to be draining away. And instead, that same essence... So... this was also an option. Elwyn muttered to herself, so softly that the exiled princess did not hear. Then she spoke louder. Cassidy. Yes? Shall I help you wreak your vengeance? Oh, yes. Can you? Yes. But you must stay with me, damned as we may become. I would gladly walk through the flames of hell at your side. Revenge or no? Yes. It was all Eloan needed to hear. A declaration of love in its own right. She allowed her essence to flow freely now into Cassidy. The pair together began to change form, growing more monstrous, more powerful. The soldiers did not stand a chance against their combined might. Do you wish to kill him yourself, dear heart? It is, perhaps, your duty. <laughs> I love this ending. On either side of them lie mounds of corpses, but in front lay the greatest prize, King Alexander himself. No. It's all right, Elowen. Alexander, in his terror, could not utter a single sound. I am better than him. Yes, you are. Go. Never come here again. As of today, you no longer have a sister. And I no longer have a brother. Get him out of here. And so the king returned, broken and stumbling, to his kingdom. He would never forget, though none believed him. No, this isn't a bad end. This is a good end. <laughs> this is the one end I've been saving because this is my favorite end. <laughs> He would never forget, though none believed him. Even on his deathbed, he continued babbling of beautiful demons. As for Cassidy and Elowen... Goodness. I have no idea how your hair gets so tangled. <laughs> oh, I love them. I love them. Ah. It is the wind, my love. Is that so? We shall have to teach it a lesson. Yeah, that's so rude of the wind, can it not? Demons though we may be, I do not believe we can do anything to the wind. Pee. Not with that attitude, dear one. <laughs> Decades passed, yet the two of them remained unchanged. It was a freedom, a power, that Cassidy had never known. Every day there was more to discover, more delights to find. Most of all, the pair enjoyed learning more about each other. Cassidy. Hmm. What is it? To you. I love you. How do you know I was asking that? Perhaps I was about to ask what you wish to do tomorrow. You most certainly were not. <laughs> it's all right. I'll tell you as many times as you'd like. Elowen settled into peaceful happiness, leaning against her beloved. She was utterly secure of Cassidy's feelings, but never tired of hearing about them. And even now, without a doubt, those two are still there. Living happily ever after. United in love, sharing their hate. These demons live on, laughing at fate. Yes! Together, we are eternal. I did it! Got all the endings! I'm so glad I saved that one until last. That actually, I feel like that worked so well. Like, I did the first good end where they both end up being human and living together happily ever after like that. 
Then I just like sandwiched all of the bad endings in and then I did what is my favorite good end. <laughs> that went so well. And also now that um now that I've done all of the endings, I know of a little Easter egg on the, the home screen. It's a little Easter egg. If you click on this, it's all the different CGs, including the ending ones, so it can be spoilery, so it's a good thing to leave until after the game has been done, but it's so, oh, look at so good. I love it. I love it. I love this game. Oh, I'm so glad to revisit it. I'll have to, like, do... find another time to do a bit more as well because there's still the bonus content there are the after stories and i haven't read these i don't know what these are so i will have to play this again at some point but i'm so glad i managed to get all of the endings done in one stream i feel so accomplished oh that was amazing though i'm just, oh, it's it's just as good as i remember it being i'm so glad but uh, we did it oh you can sleep now yes thank you oh thank you for stopping it i'm glad you were able to to stay for the the best end but yes i think with that it is probably time for me to hold on ba -ba -ba -ba. Whoop. i will head on over to here and we can find a raid target let's see who's around to raid because i've got to go feed tiffany i'm like six minutes late to feed tiffany she's gonna be so mad at me how dare i how dare i starve her i'm, I'm awful i'm a terrible person <laughs> But I'm so glad I got to play this again. It's been so long. It's such a good game. I love that game so much. I'm I'm really glad I got the chance to play. Right, who shall I raid? There's so many people on who I know. I think what I'm gonna do is... I'm going to be predictable. I'm going to send the raid over to Momo again because Momo is currently doing a partner push. She is trying to hit a Twitch partner and I think she can do it. I, I think she's she'll be able to do it. So I'm going to send the raid her way so we can support her a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much everyone for joining me. Oh, Dima. <laughs> thank you for stopping in too. I'm glad you were able to, to catch some too. But yeah, like... Uh, seven minutes late now. I'm going to be so much later by the time I've actually got the food on the plate for her. <laughs> but, uh, hold on, let me... Did I do a late message? No, it's still the comfy one. That's not really appropriate for now. Let's go fire. Let's do the fire raid message. Here we go. Here's the raid message. If you're subbed, we got fire. If not, we got more fire. Even though there was no fire. Just, um... Death. <laughs> but I'm gonna send you over to Momo, because Momo's lovely. I what Oh, she's playing Chrono Trigger. I've never played Chrono Trigger before. But I know a lot about it. But I'm gonna send the raid over to the lovely Ushime Momoka, who is a magical cow VTuber. She's trying to hit partner at the moment. So I wanna I wanna support her. I wanna send everyone her way. Cause she's a sweetheart. She is so lovely. So I'm glad that I get the chance to support her. But yes, I've got to go get dinner for myself as well as Tiffany now. So that is it from me for now. Let's get the raid up and ready to send. And thank you so much, everyone, for joining me for Without a Voice. I'm, I'm so happy I got to play it. It's so good. Such a good game. But yes, with that, I shall be off. I will be back on Friday for some more Divinity Chaos with Xander. Um, we've, um, we've really made a mess of things at the moment. So I'm very curious to know how that's going to go. We, we'll see. We'll see how Friday goes. But uh, yes, that's it from me for now. I hope everyone has a lovely rest of the week. Thank you so much for joining me today. And until next time, bye-bye.